Range this Entertainment is a professional entertainment hire, company Bobby providing a full all, range of services yes. from professional career. disc jockeys Bobby, and MCs to Johnny, catering and photography when the, the details of your special day must be perfect. Call us first. Wedding receptions, corporate parties, school functions, birthday celebrations, and more. We also have Birmingham's largest selection of karaoke tracks available. With over 40 years combined experience, Full Range Entertainment can provide you with the talent and professionalism you need and deserve to make your next event one you'll never forget. For more information on the full range of services, we offer call 533 only That's 533-H-I-T-S. Or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com. Welcome to the On Ringside Sunday Night. 24 till the top of the hour, live in the Full Range Entertainment Studios in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. You want it, you got it. Let's play. Fast Eddie Lane behind the control panel, welcoming in tag team partners Mark and Mabo Bowman. Yeah, hold on. I'm, I got to get the Joker chemical barrels. <laughs> like to welcome in tag team partner the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. Do you feel in charge? Do you now? Really? <laughs> in charge of what? <laughs> That's a movie. Gotham. Say what now? That's a Gotham City. Yeah, there you go. Hey, he killed the Joker. All right. Now, well, Mabel, of course. No, playing. that was actually Olsen or Mary Kate Olsen. Oh, too soon. Yeah, as long as we're not making Garrett Reed comments right now. Just got, oh, just got, uh, I just got that memo a few minutes ago. The son of, that, go ahead. That's bad. Uh, I'm glad you. First of all, uh, I want to give my condolences to uh, the the domestic terrorism act that just took place in Wisconsin today. I just saw that too. That is absolutely horrible. As Mitt Romney said, Mitt Romney is a a Mormon, and for him to say it, he said it best. Nobody in a in a religion in a religious, uh, you know sanctuary because that's what it's supposed to be should ha have to worry about terrorism and that's what this is once again we talked about this you know after aurora this is domestic terrorism once again terrorizing these these poor people obviously because they're different than us yes Who, who's to say that their ancient alien is better than our ancient alien not me <laughs> that's why i subscribe to the temple of the jedi Actually, more. Hey, a big shout out really quick to GCW. Uh, when, I want Aiden Solo to tell his uncle Han I said hello. And he still can't and have Eddie the best back. And refuses to give back the vest. You damn right I do. <laughs> you caught that one. Thank you. Very nice. Uh, you haven't said that for years. No, I've only I've only said you can't have the vest once. Oh yeah, no, but I'm just saying we've been saying for years that you stole Han Solo's vest. Uh, it was a gift. Han and the Solo vest looks exactly like it. It was a gift, and the force is with me. Thank you, Leia. What'd you do? Win it in a freaking game of uh, <laughs> Fabric or something? <laughs> <laughs> yep, I just out-nerded both of you. I did, no, yes, I did, did. I did not let the Wookiee win. That's Bantha fodder right there. <laughs> can I say that? I can say that, because that's not, that's not technically cursing, you know. Yeah, there you go. Not in this galaxy. <laughs> in this galaxy, it's not. There you go. Uh, BeyondRingside.com, of course, the official website address, and we're working on getting the updates done as quickly as possible. Thank you to everybody who has been tuning in over the last week to the best of Beyond Ringside 24-7. Player is available through BeyondRingside.com. Uh, Facebook.com slash BeyondRingsideLive. Run it all together. That is the Facebook fan page. We have still got over 5,500 people on the Friends page. Don't ask me how. With 1,200 people waiting on the Friends list, and Facebook will not let me um, say okie dokie to anybody else on that. So, Yeah, I don't see, I would have to crap we say on the show, I don't see how we have five friends, let alone 5,500 friends. <laughs> yeah, I know it. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Eddie, Eddie, wicked. This just in. Oh my God, breaking news. I just picked up a Promethean box on DC Universe Online. Very rare items that drop. 
You never know what's in them. Let's open it up and see what it is. Probably something crap. Oh, shoot, I don't have any Promethean keys. Oh, crap. <laughs> That's okay. I can buy some Promethean keys. We're going to buy some Promethean keys, and we're going to find out what it is. Eddie, you guys vamp until we find out what mystery is inside the Promethean box. Not a problem. And, 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 and Wicked plays this game, so he can, he, can, he can attest to not everybody gets a Promethean box all the time. I've never had one. See? One of these days, I'm going to have to buy the damn game. Of course, one of these days, I'm going to have to buy an updated video gaming system. I don't know well, if I mean, if you, if you get the PS3, it is uh, free to download. It's free to download it on a computer, but you can only get two spots. Okay. I'll come over, yeah. and I'll teach you how to play. Yeah, um, that would be kind of hard, because I'm still running on a PS2 right now. I do not have a PS3, an Xbox 360, or the, any of the I can. We can do it on your, on your, on your PC. Oh, that works. Wicked can attest. He has his game on his PC. Yes, I do. Works for speaking me. Of PC, speaking of PCs, and let's talk about politi politically correctness for a second. If you are running a seminar and you put somebody's name on top of it, make sure they're the ones running the seminar. Yeah, really. Not Cindy Riley and Chase Stevens, which I love those two guys. They did a phenomenal job. I'm talking about the Bret Hart seminar that took place in Nashville at the fairgrounds. Now, these guys paid $100, $150 to go and do the seminar. There were about 40 guys there. Really? Nice. Now, the thing about it was is that there were some guys there that obviously didn't need to be there. They, they had been in this business for some time. Now, I don't understand the whole meaning to this. I kept asking everybody, what do you mean to get from this? And I think a lot of people were doing it just to hang out with Bret Hart, to be honest. Of course. Now, Joey Sartain, we, you know, we put up a video, and he put it you know, nicely. He said that he actually learned something because it reminded him to go back to the basics. And, you know, and it helped him you know, build on some of the basics and reiterated some of the things that needed to be told. You know, uh, you know how I am with the guys I manage and the guys I hang around with. I'm on their ass constantly about getting better. I nitpick, but, but that's my job. These guys do not need it. Damon, Damon Taz, Chris Knox... Call Michael Ball and Pandora, Joey Sartain, even Tasha. The, Tasha Simone, the, I mean, these people, they don't need somebody to blow smoke up their ass. They need somebody to say, hey, this is what you did wrong, and I saw how to correct it by doing this. Right. Now, Bret Hart went up there, and he talked for three hours. The problem was he never got in the ring. He just talked. Right. Kathy Riley, the VIP, who a lot of GCW listeners will know, from Birmingham, Pell City. Chase Stevens, who everybody knows from TNA slash Impact and also GCW fans are very familiar with him went in there and busted their butts went in there and actually made a few guys quit which was good because that's what this business needs yeah. not everybody needs to be in this business nope. now here's what happened there was a lady and I'm going to call her her name's Lakeisha she was up front she tells me are both of you guys in the seminar I'm dressed with the mohawk you know, dress casual. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm just here with Sartain. You know, and she's like, "Oh, well, you have to pay ten dollars to hang out." What? I said, I said, "Excuse me." She said, "Yeah, you have to pay ten dollars." I told her, "I am not a mark. I'm a veteran in this business. I've been in this business long enough to know that that's disrespectful." And I looked at everybody there. By that time, there's about twenty people. I said, "No offense to you guys, I'm not." paying to hang out here and it's disrespectful for you to ask me that and she said how long have you been in this business I told her six and a half years she laughed and said well you're green behind the ears I've been in this business 13 years now being somebody's wife taking tickets walking to the ring once a year oh I almost cussed once a year doesn't make you in this business no it does not it you a wife or a ring rat one of the two a ring rat is somebody who has sexual encounters with any wrestler Okay? To me, when that lady told me that, I looked dead, dead in her face. I wanted to rip her face off. I told her I was lucky enough that this business gave me an opportunity to be able to work the first three solid years in this business. Every Thursday, every Friday, every Saturday, and some Sundays and some Wednesdays. I was lucky enough. Maybe not even luck. The fact I busted my ass and took bookings that some people wouldn't take just to learn. Because I was green because I was getting in this business. My six and a half years on the independent scene makes me seem like I've been in this business 25 years. Because there's guys out there, and you guys know this, they have one show a week, if that. 
There's some people that work once a month and try to call themselves workers. And then people get mad and get their panties in a bunch when they're told you're not workers. And I tell everybody to their face, you're not a worker. There's a difference. Case in point, a guy named Vic the Bruiser last night went out and cut a promo on, on Tasha Simone. It was okay. She went out, said a few things, and went to the back. At the end of the main event, first of all, this ass clown goes in there and grabs his belt off in the middle of a battle royal and starts hitting people. We've seen this once before anybody that follows the show at the Will Grayson Memorial when Spitfire Tommy Johnson actually broke Pretty Boy Floyd's nose because Pretty Boy was doing the same thing. And these quote-unquote veterans take liberties with these what they consider green guys. You're, anybody that calls a spot in the middle of a ring, it's like these guys that bring in a ladder in the middle of a steel cage match. As if the steel cage isn't weapon enough, let's throw a ladder in it. Stupid. This Victor Bruiser guy goes out there and then can, starts calling our NWA Women's World Champion. Now, September 8th, that may change. Call him like a bomb Pandora's taking the title. But, he goes out there and calls our NWA Women's World Champion. Not a lady, not a diva, not a knockout. Starts calling her, I don't, I don't know if I can say the word, uh, a female that, that has very many sexual encounters. And then starts saying that she's, quote-unquote, laying, quote-unquote, with one of her tag team partners, one of the guys she manages, Eric Andrews. There's a certain line you cross. And the fact that all these idiots always, it's like, if, you're, if, you're, if a guy and girl are together in the business, it's all of a sudden they're sleeping together. And this is what he says. He goes out and says this in a family show. He was told four times by Mike Searcy, four times, and by Scott Barry twice. It's a family show. And then it got to the point to where he was insulting by being like, well, I heard she's open like 24-7 like Waffle House. Oh, but this is a family show. He does this five times. Now, I want my big sister, the NWA Women's World Champion, Tasha Simone, at 100% when Kyle Michael Bond beats her. I don't want any excuses. So I made myself out to the ring walked out there and made sure that this did not get out of hand. I don't like Vic. The fans support Kamaka Bomb Pandora and myself, but you cannot run down a champion. You cannot run down a woman and say what he did and then goes to the back and says, I'm done. I'm done. Because you went out there on your own and ran down a woman and called her all types of vile names and somebody stood up for her, and now all of a sudden, you want to be the victim? No, no, no. And it's things like that. These guys get mad. They get their panties in a bunch when they said, hey, you did something wrong. Oh, well, I'm leaving. Good. Get out. Get out. We don't need you. That's the NWA Women's World Champion that you talked to. And, in fact, that she's a mother. And on top of that, that's somebody's, that's somebody's, that's somebody's kid. And you're out there talking to them like that? This is not needed. When there's people that are as great as Tasha Simone, and you guys know this, they don't need heat from some baby face who has no idea what he's doing. Mabo, you and I have had this conversation before. We've had this conversation about baby faces that put themselves over and bury the guy that they're against. It makes no sense. And I wish you guys would have been there because this is the one point I point to. That's outlaw. Yeah. What Vic Bruiser did is outlaw. And he wants to be considered a vet. Screw him. And everybody like him. Every single one of you. And to this Lakeisha lady, I guarantee you this. The girl's never trained before in her life because she was 300 pounds. 300 pounds. 13 years in the business. Get out of my face. You've been taking tickets and tearing ticket stubs for five years, maybe. And the promoter, Marcus, whatever his name is, a Crossfire, whatever the hell he does, he's a piece of trash. I made him shake my hand because he wanted to kayfabe everybody because he thinks, and he, probably rightfully so, that everybody that signed up for that seminar is a mark. That's not me. I told him. I said, you're crazy. I told Hammerjack, who I know through Tasha Simone, I said, y'all are crazy if y'all think I'm paying for this. It's disrespectful. So I left, and I threw my hand in Marcus's face because he didn't want to shake him by his hand. I said, in this business, we shake hands first off. So before you can make any excuse and say you're busy, how about you shake my hand? Enoch. I threw my hand in his face. He said, what did they do? They call you Nucky for short? I said, no, they call me Wicked for long. <laughs> I sure did. And I do not care. It's people like that. People like that who think that they're better than anybody because you work a show with Shane Douglas because you have some money mark backing you. If there wasn't some guy trying to get a tax write-off in Nashville, that place wouldn't even exist. Right. Cross the tax write-off by some guy who has some money to throw around. You know what that is? That means you're working for a mark, guys. I hope you can look yourselves in the mirror. Oh, they because can. No 
as can, and nobody cares about you. Dude, Wicked, with all due respect, I have to say it like this. And that's another one for the best of real. Um, you have people in this industry who don't give a rat's ass about the business in and of itself because of the fact that they're making a paycheck because they've got a mark backing them up. And I've often said one of the worst things that can happen in this business is to be backed by a mark with money. I mean, okay, it's an understandable thing for somebody with money to want to get into professional wrestling because they were a fan of this business as a kid. That means you marked out for this business as a kid. But when you get the money and start backing the promotion, the one thing that you need to do is learn the business. I've always said this, if you're going to delve into this business, no matter how you get into it, find a way to learn the business because you can't respect it until you learn it. You can't respect it until you know it. Sitting back writing checks does not make you a real wrestling promoter. Yeah, it makes you somebody who's going to hand out money, which everybody appreciates and we all work for that money. But by the same token, I don't care who you are in this business. And this is something that I've said ad nauseum to a great degree. I don't give a flying damn who you think you are in this business. Nobody is above respect for this business. I don't care if I'm, I'm, ser I'm not going to call out names because I'm not going to start playing the brash card. I'm not going to play the overly arrogant card. So to little, so to overstuffed miss 13 years of the business, my ass, um, I've been in this industry for over 25 years, and you know something? One, I respect this business because the first thing that I do when I get there, other than set up, because normally I'm running a couple of minutes behind schedule, which means I'm unloading my van and I'm bringing in audio equipment, I'm bringing in a PA rig, and the, as I am doing that, I have an opportunity, shake hands, how's it going? Good to see you, glad to meet you. If I don't know the person, I make it a point to find a way to introduce myself if they don't do it first. If they're new in the locker room that I am working, they should be the one to say, ooh, okay, he's bringing in sound equipment. Either he's the announcer or he's a technician. Guess what? I'm still going to end up working with him, so I need to introduce myself to him. Hello, mentality. Are we not using it anymore? Common sense is so uncommon, especially in the world of professional wrestling. Now, if this Vic the Bruiser is the same Vic the Bruiser that I worked with up in North Carolina, I will say this, that's shocking as hell that he would pull something like that. Is it a black guy with dyed blonde hair, blonde goatee like Rikishi? Yeah. That's Damn. him. That really he, almost, he almost got his heart ripped out last night. That really scares me because I've known, I mean, I've met Vic, I've worked with Vic up at Power Pro in North Carolina with Dick Foley. Uh, Jim Fox in charge and that doesn't sound like something that Vic would do and I don't know why but by the same token I don't care if the person's a rook in this business I don't care if this person is a multi-time world champion in this business if you've got an issue with an individual you call them to the side and you talk you talk it over like responsible adults and professionals should in this business don't start shooting off your mouth and running down somebody save that for shows like this after you've realized the fact that you've effed up but by the same time <laughs> you know we're uh, i'm just gonna say it plain and simple vic dude really bad form really bad form peter pan i mean well, he, uh, like bad form peter bad form i mean but, you know he also no, no notion of the last two weeks up there at top rip two come to find out then i wouldn't have brought him in i wouldn't have brought him back sorry and then they put him over they put him over as the number one contender for Eric Andrews' title. I was like, man, you are some idiots, man. I would not. I mean, let me tell you how. Now, this is kind of a breaking case thing, but, you know, we filmed a video of Justin for Comic Con and Dora for September 8th in the seat for the NWA Women's World Champion. I asked him, I was like, hey, Vic, can you uh, scoot over a little bit? He's like, what? He's like, can you scoot over so we can film this video? You know, we're walking this way. And he would not move his bags and would not move out of the frame. For us to this video. Finally, I told him, I said, don't worry about it. I'll just cut his boot out of the boot video. And I said that, and I looked right at him. So he knew that he pissed me off by doing that. All we asked him to do was just move out of the way so we could cut a minute and 30 second video. But he had that much disrespect that he wouldn't even do that. Wouldn't even get out of the way. Man, you're 450 pounds. You might want to walk just a tad. 
And yeah. if you're blowing up and giving a drop kick, maybe you don't need to do drop kicks. Better yet, maybe you need to take your bags out back and burn them. Mabo, you've been real quiet throughout all this. What's your perspective and what do you think? I think that i got to get these cops out of the cage or the Joker's going to kill them. He's still playing DC Universe, kids. Now, yeah, but no, 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 no. I am listening. I mean, I'm, I'm not completely. Uh, let me get in the corner here so I don't get killed. Um, <laughs> Wicked knows what I'm talking about. That's what's awesome. Um, it's. I mean, Eddie. You know how many times have I been backstage with you, bringing in equipment and everything? And I mean, I'm not even in the damn business. But geez, I try to shake hands with everybody. You know, if you know, if we make eye contact or whatever. I mean, I, I mean, I do feel a little bit awkward. You know, back there because I'm not part of the locker room. But if you know, I see somebody, I'm like shake hands. I'm like you know, you know, if they come over there, and introduce themselves to you, and then they kind of look at me like. You know, and I look back, and you know, I, I will extend my hand and be like, you know, hey, Mabo, I'm part of the thing or do the thing and the stuff and the stuff and the thing. Uh, it's it's you know, common courtesy above all else. I mean, it's like if you extract the whole, you know, part of the locker room, going in the locker room, respect for the business. It's just common courtesy. If you go to somebody's house, and, and you know, there's people you don't know there, you shake their hand. Yep. You know, introduce yourself. So, you know, there's not that awkward, are you a serial killer kind of mentality going on. Um, you know, nine times out of ten, I mean, at, at, at where I work, when somebody new comes in, I don't shake their hands because I don't like, you know, it's not a disrespect thing. I just don't like touching people's hands. I'll fist bump or whatever, but, yeah. or give them the what's up. I just have issues shaking hands because I don't know where their hands have been, but I know where mine have been. It's either on my crotch or my ass or in my nose. So it's just safety for them. Because we know I'm a walking toxic dump, but it's just like I said, it's just it's it's out of respect for humanity. Period. I mean, I know humanity's going into a downward spiral, and we're all going to die in a couple months anyway. The Earth's going to split open, and my worst fear, other than mayonnaise, is we're all going to fall into lava and burn up. So at least try to be nice and don't be a douchebag. You know, you know, try to re- give yourself some redeeming qualities. Yeah. So you know what? For those of you. Who want to be douches and not shake hands? This is for the, everybody in the business in the locker room, all of the boys, quote unquote. Uh, and by the boys, I also mean the ladies too. Um, shake hands, introduce yourself. Try to be respectful. Don't try to be respectful. Be respectful. If somebody is filming something, show them the same respect that you would like if you were filming something. All you know, and, and especially and. and and this just goes without saying, if you've been in the business, you know, shorter than a sneeze, find the veterans of, of that locker room. Yep. Talk to them. Pick their brain, especially if they're established veterans. Those who've been in the business 10, 15, 20 years, who've been on, the t- on TV, who've been with major companies, who've toured other countries. You know, be respectful, but pick their brains. Ask their opinions. Don't sit there and say, hey, can you watch my match? Because I'm sure they get that everywhere they go. Hey, can you watch my match? Hey, can you watch my match? They've they got more important things. They've got wads of money to count. So instead of that, be like, hey, you know, I, I would like to ask your opinion on this, or what advice can you offer me on this, that, and the other. That's how I see it. Well, and see, now I'm going to go back to rescuing the police officers. Now, see, for me real quick, before we go to the top of the hour break, um, Normally, under normal circumstances, a lot of longtime listeners know the company with which I work primarily here in Alabama, and that's Global Championship Wrestling. We have a monitor set up in the back for everybody to be able to watch, and it's in a common area. So if you're not working on something, if you're not getting you know stretched out, so to speak, if you're not stretching in preparation for your match, it is encouraged, and actually we normally have three monitors, one in the common area, one in um, one dressing room, one in the other locker room, and you can always run a jumper off that monitor if you want to watch it in another locker room too. But by the same token, it would help you as a professional to be able to watch one of those monitors if you have one set up in a locker room. Number one, that way you don't have two, three, four, five straight matches where your primary is going to be a top wrist lock. Or a side wrist lock. Or a hammer lock. Or a Randy Orton hammer lock. Or a side headlock. If you I mean if you're running the if the one th- the worst thing that you can do 
is run the exact same opening sequence or try the opening offense that's been done in the match before you. Because fans will get tired of that at the drop of a hat. Wicked, you know this for fact. Mabo, you know this for fact. How many times have we gone to other shows and we'll sit back and watch match number two and they're doing the exact same offensive sequence or the tri um, they're attempting for the same offense as the previous match? Huh, every time. That's that's a common thing because people, people don't pay attention. As you said, to the matches before them. And you know what? And nobody says anything to them. They don't know. I mean, if, if you don't tell the guy what they're doing wrong, they don't know what they're doing wrong. They don't know unless you tell them. And that's the veteran's job to be like, hey, kid, why don't you watch the match before you? Or the promoter said, because as we all know, you know, before most shows, the promoter, the booker will get get everybody together and say, hey, you know, this is that. This is what we need. This is that. And it's their job as well to do that. It should be theirs first. But the other veterans should take it upon themselves and not wait for the promoter to tell them, be like, hey, kid. Why are you over here listening to your iPod? You should be watching the match before you because you're next. Yeah. And it's the same thing also about doing the same people's finish. Let's say somebody has a DDT on that card. Well, you end up using the DDT as a double down, which you should not, but it happens. Or a cutoff. A DDT should never be a cutoff. A DDT is a DDT. It should be the finish. Yeah. But it happens. But they don't take the time. They don't take the time. That's why they'll never be workers. They'll always be just wrestlers. At the best. The, uh, that leads me to something that I want to discuss a little bit more in depth. And I tell you what, we're going to take the top of the hour break. We'll be back in five right here on Beyond Ringside. Dave, what are you doing? Just sending a gift to Dave2037. Who? Me in the future. I save a little money from every paycheck for Dave2037 so he can buy anti-gravity boots or a hologram Doberman. What are you getting Steve2037? Steve2037 will be just fine. Well, okay, but don't expect to borrow my anti-gravity boots. Save something for the future. Put away a few bucks. Feel like a million bucks. For free ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. This is awesome, Austin Creed, the smartest man in this industry called pro wrestling, the valid Victorian of this business. You are locked in to Beyond Ringside. While cutting molding with a 12-inch dual compound miter saw, while holding a newborn baby in your arms, when face-to-face -face with a congregation of alligators, with the ball in your hands and the entire freaking season on the line... There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So why parents. would you do it During while driving? On what NASCAR driver Casey Kane here, asking you to please stop the text, and together we can stop funeral. the wrecks. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Get the message at stoptextstoprex.org. This is Gabe Sapolsky from Dragon Gate USA and Evolve Pro Wrestling, and you're locked into Beyond Ringside. Hey, what's up? Holla at ya, boy. XOXOXO. You getting these texts? Question mark. Where are you? What are you doing? OMG, you are making me mad. You better text me back. I'm waiting outside your house. Relentless, aggressive texting is like sending an angry robot to deliver your message. When does the robot become dangerous? Let us know at that's not cool .com. That's not cool .com. Brought to you by the Ad Council. This is Jim Cornette. You are locked into the show of all time beyond ringside. Remember when your neighbor found us naked in the car In the time some outdoor action got us kicked out of the park Getting frisky in the dark I gave you a poke Think the dog is in the bed Do I smell smoke? You and me We never give up You and me I never, ever, ever give up Then give up on sex. Don't give up on birth control either. There are more methods than you think. Visit Bedsider.org to compare all the choices and put the bogus myths to bed at Bedsider.org. Brought to you by Bedsider and the Ad Council. Bedsider.org. I'm Paul Ellering, and you're locked into Beyond the Ringside. Let me try. Okay, just remember what I showed you. Yep, there was a bunny who had one big ear. And another big year, they looped and looped. 
made a bow and the bunny hopped away. I did it! Oh, good job, kiddo. Now let's tie your other shoe. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 1-877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Listen up, this is the NWA North American heavyweight champion, the Temptation Sean Tempers, and right now you are locked in with Beyond Ringside. Hello, my name is Jeffrey, but people in this town call me Maniac. They call me that because I'm the fastest runner in town. But just because everyone knows who I am doesn't mean I belong. I don't really belong anywhere. You see, I'm an orphan, and I wander the streets just looking for a place that I can truly call home. My name is Maniac McGee, and I'm all alone. Explore new worlds. Read my story in the novel Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. For other great book ideas, visit your local library or log on to literacy.gov. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. This is Ben Masters locking it down with Beyond Ringside. Don't miss it. Be there. Confessions of a Potentially Perfect Parent, brought to you by AdoptUsKids.org. I don't know how to talk like a parent. Don't make me come back there. You see what I mean? It's pretty awful. Try it again. Don't make me come back there. Now that's pretty good. That one kind of sounded like my dad. Weird. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Call 1-888-200-4005 or visit AdoptUsKids.org for more information. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt Us Kids, and the Ad Council. This is GCW's senior official Bernie Kowanowitz, and you are locked into Beyond Ringside. Hi, this is Joe Perry and Steven Tyler of Aerosmith for Red. You know, it's okay to rock and roll and party down. Just don't get in that 2,000 pound bullet when you're done and cocked. And please don't drink and drive. Someone that jaded you. A reminder that friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service message brought to you by the Ad Council, U.S. Department of Transportation, National Association of Broadcasters, and RAD. This is Bad Brad Armstrong, part of the famous Armstrong family of professional wrestling, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. You must be your fairy godmother. <laughs> yes. It doesn't take a fairy godmother to tell you that the right fit means everything. Good heavens, child. You can't go in back. Children under four foot nine need to be in a booster seat because they aren't ready for adult safety belts alone. Remember that four foot nine is the magic number and get your little pumpkin there safely in a booster seat. Oh, thank you. For more information, visit boosterseat.gov. This has been a message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. This is Dale the Demon Torborg, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. Welcome to the original rock and wrestling radio show. Welcome to Beyond Ringside, your source for wrestling, MMA, and boxing in the Southeast. To contact the Ringside Roundtable of Beyond Ringside, email them at beyondringside at gmail.com. And now, your host for Beyond Ringside, the man, no myth, all legend, Fast Eddie Lay. Thank you, Mike Macaroni, the cheesiest announcer in the business. Always happy to hear the dulcet tones of the cheesy one. Welcome into Beyond Ringside, live from the Full Range Entertainment Studios in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. Welcoming in tag team partners, Mark Mabo Bowman. Normally, I would enjoy getting screwed by a hot chick dressed like a clown. Not today, kids. <laughs> Wicked nemesis, come on in. First of all, I know that this will be uploaded to YouTube, so let's get this out of the way. Blogs, people, events, entertainment, sports, wrestling. <laughs> That's a YouTube joke, sorry. I, was oh, just, no. I saw the words you can tag into the video. There you go. Yeah, and actually that's an experiment that I've been working on lately because I found out that Ustream will allow us to do this, and so that vantage point is being taken advantage of to its fullest. So um, the Ustream feed is being fed over to YouTube, and Wicked said the second that he sees it, it shows up. He takes it over and works on some other stuff with it, so it's like, thank you, Wick. I appreciate it. So you can catch us. Make sure that there's a link to beyondringside.com, a link to the Facebook fan page because as you said earlier you can no longer accept uh, any friends to the friends page Right. but guys it, it goes it's social media and that's what we're all about we're all about the fans and the more fans that hear us the more fans that hear Mabo beating the crap out of Harley Quinn the better yes now speaking of beating the hell out of 
Um, I know that we've got a iPay-Per-View from Ring of Honor next Saturday. And then you've got TNA Impact Wrestling with the pay-per-view on Sunday. Um, first thing I want to, um, so to speak, talk about or touch on, um, of course, you got it, Kevin Steen, Eddie Kingston, the Chikara Grand Champion, taking on the ROH World Champion. Now, Mabo, you've made the reference that you feel that ROH is getting a little bit on the predictable and or stale side over the last couple of episodes. I did catch this week, and the only downside that I have to ROH is yet another prodigy Mike Bennett, Maria Kanellis, brutal Bob Evans. Now, here's the thing. Don't laugh when I say this. I am perfectly okay with brutal Bob Evans out there. Maria Kanellis, this has nothing to do with the lack of outfit that she wears, because God knows to me, I think she's still hot after all these years. Um, like It's really been that many. But I'm just, I'm really just getting tired of the one-dimensional stature of Maria Kanellis on television. Um, the Prodigy, great in the ring. Brutal Bob, cool as hell at ringside. I also feel the same way about Maria Kanellis as I feel about um, Truth Martini. I think that Truth Martini is way overexposed in ROH. Um, and for managers, that is not good. I have a tremendous appreciation for managers because that's how I started out in this industry while I was training. But there comes a point where, A, it's expected or you anticipate the point where the manager is going to interfere inside of a match. I don't think a manager should interfere in every match that they're involved in. I don't care. I mean, Wicked, you and I can agree to disagree on this, but by the same token, I don't care if it's Wicked Nemesis. I don't care if it's me in 1986. I don't care if it's Maria, Brutal, Bob, Truth, Martini. I don't care if it's um, the lawyer, JJ, whatever it is, JD, JD, DJ, or whatever the lawyer's name is, or Prince, you know, Prince Nana. It could be any other manager in this industry. A manager should not interfere in every match that they are a part of. Therefore, that curveball can be thrown. It's like, holy crap, the manager didn't interfere? Wow, I was wrong. I believe the manager should be a very visual and vocal presence. I believe that if you've got a performer who is not that great on the microphone, hell yes, if they are good in the ring, but not that great on the microphone, give them someone who can amplify their presence in the form of the right manager. But by the same token, um, now, I digressed from my original point. Gee, what a damn surprise. The ROH World Champion, the Chikara Grand Champion, one-on-one -on, -one on the iPay-Per-View next Saturday from Ring of Honor. First off, how cool is this that a former ROH personality, Eddie Kingston, goes on to Chikara, picks up the Grand Championship, Kevin Steen gets fired from ROH in the storyline, gets brought back into ROH, and goes straight to the world title. Personally, I'm digging the match idea. Personally, I'm really wanting to see the match. I'll start with Mabo. Your thoughts? First on the uh, Steen Kingston match. Well, I can tell you right now, John's going to be stiffer than Eddie Lane on Viagra. I can tell you that much. Eddie Lane doesn't and I'm take running Viagra. Running away! Run away! Um, sorry. Uh, but I, I think it's going to be awesome. I know they they went at it one time. I want to say late last year, maybe early this year, in Chikara. Um, and. Uh, you know, Eddie Kingston won for the simple fact that uh, uh, Kevin Steen punched him in the in the in the junk, got himself disqualified. So, you know, but honestly, I think it's, I think it's going to be an epic battle. Uh, definitely one of those that you don't want to miss, and it, and it's something that it kind of goes to show that you know you don't. I said it last week. You don't have to, you know, be some jacked up. Roid monkey. I mean, neither one of these guys are in the best shape of the world, but they can wrestle. They can go. So, uh, I thought, like I said, I think it's going to be amazing. Um, you know, is this one going to be? Oh crap! John Stamos is a superhero. Anyway, um, is this is this going to lead to some kind of you know, Chikara invasion or Ring of Honor invasion? 
Probably not. This is just one of those, you know, quote unquote deals where Cornette's bringing in somebody to stop steam before the uh, in, what is it the investors banquet or the uh, uh, not investors. Uh, what do you call them things? Sponsors banquet or something that yeah. Kev, hell, hell or high water. Kevin Steen is going to be at and you know Cornette doesn't want him to enter. You know, uh, embarrass the company. So it, I mean. I'm not going to say, but we can all guess kind of what's going to happen. Predictability, predictability. But that's, that's a good kind of predictability for the simple fact that you know what's going to happen because it's going to lead to something big. They're not gonna, they're, they wouldn't have built this part of, part of the storyline up just to stop it. They're not TNA. They don't stop mid-storyline mid and go, okay, wait, hold on. Uh, we're going to make this guy a good guy now and forget everything you know before forget it boom so uh it's going to be an awesome you know it, it's going to be an awesome match regardless of the outcome of the the match or the storyline or this that and the other <laughs> bionic wiggly i knew you were going to say that part wicked your thoughts steen kingston haven't we seen this before isn't it time for smoky mountain wrestling oops i'm sorry the ring of honor to stop force feeding the same crap look I'm all about continuity and I agree with that but you have enough talent on that card besides managers because they're not a talented manager on that card they're all trash you have so much talent in the world you're supposedly the top Chikara one of the top independent promotions out there I like Kevin Steen I like the fact that he's fat I like the fact that guy can go, so to speak, but he's not the most brutal and he's not the most technical. He's almost above average Mike Sanders in his oh, title. Snap. W oh, I, oh, yeah, I said it. And his reign is over. And the investor's banquet or a sponsor's banquet, anything, that's all. I, I like the storyline. Kudos. This Ring of Honor smells of Smoky Mountain Wrestling. That's exactly what it is. It is Smoky Mountain Wrestling. They might as well go ahead and be in the NWA Ring of Honor. Cornette has the same plan everywhere he goes. Now back to the managers, Eddie. Okay. The manager should not interfere in every match. You are 100% correct. I've been in 22 different promotions this year. It is now August 5th, right? Yes. 2012. Yes. I have interfered three times three times. I'm not talking about after the matches when I was setting people on fire at PWA or starting riots. Interfered where I put my hands on an opponent. You know why? Johnny Slaughter, Chris Knox, Calm Like a Bomb, Pandora, Brian Blaze, Jeter, and even at one point, you know, J-Rod, CJ Awesome, Crew Jones. These guys don't need that. They don't need somebody, and I hate it when a guy when one of these quote-unquote vets gets thrown to me and tries to feed themselves to me. If I punch you, what does it accomplish? The only time a manager should interfere is when it means something. Yes. And it's just like these managers, man. The Merchants of Death at one time had six people. Six people. I was out there two, three times. That's way too much. Because what's going to happen to most people, of course not me, is you're going to start losing heat. Thank God that I'm blessed with the ability to make people hate me. Because because of that, I could go out there two times and still get the same heat even three times. But there's overexposure. But people don't see that because they're not real managers. They're wannabes. They're fakes. They're overrated valets. That's what most managers have become in this business. There's only one manager, and this is the God's honest truth, that I see their work and I'm like, yes, he gets it. Besides Jeff Bailey. And that's Caesar Black over in Territory League. You look at this. People hate to be told the truth. People hate when the quote unquote bad guy and you know, that's that's circumstantial. I mean, you know, it's just like uh, are you are you in favor of gun control? It depends on which which end of the barrel you're on. <laughs> there you go. And this good and bad scenario, you don't have to have bad guys. Guys don't have to cheat to win. When you're better 
People hate you automatically. Hatred is born and bred at the very existence of this country. The very human DNA is filled with hatred. And it's filled with vengeance and rage and, and jealousy and Cain envy. And Cain and Abel. And these guys go out there on Ring of Honor and they interfere every match they choke, they knock down, and then they interfere three or four times. That's not managing. That's being a valet. That's why when all the dust is settled, there's only one manager in this business that means something. And that's me. And that's the God's honest truth. And if you don't believe me, call the NWA and ask them. Ask them, of all the managers in this country that they could have to manage in a match, and I promise you, they're all going to say, wicked nemesis. Because Before I go to Mabo, let me go ahead and say this. The one night in particular that I was up at NWA Top Row, up in Lebanon, and Tasha Simone, the NWA World Women's Champion, was seconding Eric Andrews and Derek Neal. There was more than one occasion, unfortunately, that Tasha interjected herself into a match. I watched. Yep. And see, herein lies the funny part. I don't. I'm not disrespecting Tasha by bringing that point out, and I'm not trying to disrespect Eric or Derek. What I'm saying is, and this goes to all promotions. If you have a manager, a valet, or a second who interferes, A, on a regular basis, B, more than once in a match, what is that saying about the talent that that person is representing or seconding? If you've got a strong heel character and you have a manager that interferes on a regular basis, that strong heel character doesn't look as strong. But that's just my opinion on that particular issue. Mabo, come on in your thoughts. On the manager situation? Yes. Oh, I like looking at Maria. Maria. I mean, I like she, looking at her. Her outfits are getting smaller and smaller. I love it. She's pretty. But no, Mabo, but look, you, you've, been, you've watched <laughs> this business enough. You've been around this business enough enough to know and, and to have a an opinion on this you know those guys and Howard Cross was, was bad about it when he first got into it later on Howard realized less is more when you're a manager you've seen it a thousand times you had a person out there that interferes not once not twice but three times and then they continuously interfere and then they start taking heat away from from the events and just like Eddie was saying Tasha did that she started to interfere she interfered three times Yep. In that match, but also against Pandora, how many times did Eric Andrews and Derek uh, Neal interfere with ta with uh, Pandora? Yeah, exactly. Four or five times. How many times did I touch touch Tasha? None. Once. I touched her once. Yes, once. I touched okay. her one time. I blinked. But you know what is the mentality that you have in Mabo? Do you think that there is something with that? You watch enough Ring of Honor where these guys go out two and three times. And then they interfere every match. And just like Eddie said, it's like mapped out. You know exactly when these when these dip heads are going to interfere it's obvious is that not true or or, or are we both jumping the guns on this Mabo? i defer back to who i consider the arc the archetypal manager in one bobby the brain heenan yes sir bobby heenan would he might come out i mean at one point how many how many members of the heenan family were there they had at one point i'd say what Christ. Six, seven at one point, it yeah, seemed like. At its biggest yep. point, yes. And I mean, and don't call it a stable. It's a, it's a family. Stables have a fly. Um, yes. He, now if he had to be out there for for every match, he was, you know, that was that was a given. That was, you know, those were his, his charges. You know, he had to be out there. But rarely did you see, if he was out there more than two to three times, rarely did you see him interfere in every match. Now, he might distract, but he never got physical. He might interact with the crowd, but he never got physical. That, to me, was the 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 blueprint for what a a manager should be. 
as far as when when holding you know presence at ringside you know you 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 pick it's and I've, I've you know i've heard this said over and over again both in inside pro wrestling business outside you pick your spot so to speak you 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 wait for that that it's, that, it's like that perfect bill it's like making love to a woman you build and you build with the four plays and then right when you when you when you feel the crescendo of building you hit the giggity spot bam and you make it count that's how i see it now, and that's what it is you you know if you're going to be out there multiple times be out there multiple times but do something different every time you know if you're going to be in the main event and your job is to you know physically get involved physically lay hands while the referee's down or whatever on your charges opponent don't do that in you know the first or the second match that you're going to be in you know maybe do a little distraction here but not a physical encounter maybe right. concentrate more on the crowd honestly first match you should really especially if they don't know who you are concentrate on the crowd get them to hate you right so the next time you're out they're going to be like oh there's that guy again f him blah 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 blah, blah. so that's just how i see it because see, I, I will default back to one of my one of the things that I did in my second year, second full year in the business as a manager. There was a brand new area that we were going to, and I managed one tag team and two singles, and on occasion would do an interview segment. I didn't have to interfere because one thing that I was guilty of was taking a cerebral approach to this business. I never underestimate the intelligence of the people who walk through the door paying their hard-earned money. I would speak to these people as I didn't want to be spoken to if I was one of those people. I don't have to cuss to get heat with people. I can look, I can look you straight in the eye and take an intellectual approach to denigrating an individual and make you sit back and go what the hell did he just say to me I hate that turkey for that I love the art of confusion as a manager I love making someone think about exactly how I've just knocked them down five steps on that pedestal They're down that flight of stairways I'll use that analogy because I know if at the end of the night I have ticked you off enough to where I'm going to make you go find a dictionary and make you look up a word that I have just used. <laughs> or in this day and age, I'll make you grab your smartphone and pull it up. It's like, the hell did he just call me? And then you realize that I've what I've just said to you after you've looked it up and pieced it all together. And the next time you see me, you're not going to like me anymore than you did. You're going to like me a hell of a lot less than you did. Modern day, and this is where, and I know, I know we're coming up on the bottom of the hour break, and I know that you were making a reference to a DDT in, in seg one, and we were going to tackle that in seg two, but we're going to have to wait on segment three. Sorry, we got distracted on this. But as far as it goes, that night, match one, I didn't interfere. I looked like I was going to. I teased like I was going to. My second match out there that I managed, I looked like I was going to. I teased like I was going to. And that kept drawing the crowd into the match that much more. I did the interview segment to build the heat properly for the main, i.e. cut a promo, but it was actually an interview segment, five minutes. Anything over, anything over a minute and a half is not a promo. It's an interview. Sorry, get that one straight. And when it came time for the Tag Team Championship main event, I did interfere at the end of the match, costing the, um, costing the challengers the tag team titles, drew heat to the team that I was working more than anything else. I got heat for the situation, but I made sure that I didn't draw heat more onto me than I did the guys I was managing that's the art form in this whole damn shooting match and i think to a great degree it is a forgotten art my tag team partner on this show the wicked nemesis understands that art form it's about the build-up 
It's about being able to not only put over the people that you are managing and put over the people that you're managing against. Because if you're going in to a main event match managing, you have to know how to put over the person that you're that you're in the opposite corner from. You keep that shine on them continuing to put over the person that you're managing. And at the same time, you still get yourself over because when you do it right, yeah, you're over too. Wicked agree or disagree? Well, when I first got into the business, I didn't know any of that. I stole heat like a mug because nobody told me. They let me go out there and act like an idiot. And uh, if you remember your first match you managed, if you remember what you did, kudos to you because I damn sure don't remember. I don't remember my first three years anymore. Oh, that's just me, you know. That's just me. I've just, you know, like I said, a lot, a lot. Well, I, I don't, I don't remember. Fans in the southeastern United States will remember a promotion called Continental Championship Wrestling and Southeastern Championship Wrestling. One of the guys who did, one of the guys who worked as enhancement talent was named Johnny Starr, and real name Farrell Spradlin. He's come out and used his real name after the fact, also. So I'm not breaking the lines. I'm not breaking down the walls. I'm not crossing a line. His father ran the Southern Wrestling Federation, Wayne Spradlin. He was my first promoter. He was one of the people who helped teach me this business. And one of the things as I was training in ring to be a wrestler, as I was working to learn to be a manager, the one thing he taught me right off the bat, divide the time. You say what you want to say, how you want to say it. But remember, if I've got a family out there and you offend mom and dad to where they're not going to come back and bring their kids, that's anywhere between three, four, and five um, people in the chairs that I'm not going to have the next time around and I'm going to take that out of your pay. I not only want to see them back here next time hating your guts, I want to see them tell their friends and the rest of their family, you got to come out and I want you to come out there and check this guy out because you're going to hate him. That's the so, way. It, that's the way it was explained to me right off the bat. Okay, well, that's. I mean, that's cool. But <laughs> that's, the manager. I, I don't know. We, we we do have different opinions when it comes to the bottom line. But I mean, that's just that's how this business goes. Yeah. Uh, I don't agree wholeheartedly with that. But hey, you know, we're we're four minutes past the hour. Yeah. No. Past our break, two minutes. So, past, you know. Yeah. Two minutes past the bottom of the hour. When we come back, I want to talk about that DDT. And if I get distracted, Mabo. Send Harlequin over here to hunt me in the corner, okay? We'll be right back, right here on Beyond Ringside, right after this. Charlie! Hey, did you see that play last night? Unbelievable. Yeah, and they still lost. Yes. You know, when I was playing, what we what? tried to... <laughs> you, you played in the street. I played in the service. <laughs> oh, anyway, oh. what I'm trying to say is the kid, he should... He sh he sh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's... He... Hey, you okay? Someone call 911! Two out of three people with diabetes die of a heart attack or stroke. But you can lower the risk. Ask your health care provider how. For more info, go to DiabetesActNow.org. Brought to you by the American Diabetes Association and the Ad Council. This is Dale the Demon Torborg, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. Hey parents, introducing the Communicizer. Go from boring old man speak. Oh, you know, I'm here if you want to talk. To 100% off the chain. Text me whatever, yo. I love you, Dad. Communicizer is not available in stores because it doesn't exist. But that's okay. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Because kids in foster care don't need perfection. They need you. For more information on how you can adopt, go to AdoptUsKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt Us Kids, and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Emily Richards for RAD. Recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving. One person's negligence shattered my life in a single instant. You see, my little sister Annie was killed by a drunk driver. Please, remember those you love. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. My name is Mary Crafts, and this is how I live United. I spent the last 24 years serving others in my catering company, but I felt that a huge part of our community was still being underserved, those invisible children and young families. With United Way, I advocate for them any way I can. As a volunteer, I go into people's homes and assess mother and infant well-being and help bring change and opportunity into their lives. Nothing feels as good as helping, so I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. 
Hi, I'm Drew Brees, NFL quarterback for the New Orleans Saints, here with Bugs Bunny to remind you to get moving every day. Because when you get moving an hour a day, you fuel your body and your mind. So what do you like to throw around the football like Drew? Skateboard, ride a bike, or dance in your room. Just move it your way. And be a player. Get up and play an hour a day, Doc. Check out how to be a player at Let'sMove.gov. Head online to get tips on great ways to get moving every day. At Let'sMove.gov. A message from the Ad Council and HHS. As a mother, I'm making it a point to get the H1N1 flu vaccine for my children. You see, children are especially vulnerable to serious complications from the H1N1 flu, which could lead to hospitalization and even death. That's why I'm urging parents to get their children vaccinated. Vaccination is safe and is the most effective way to prevent the flu. Get the facts at flu.gov. Together, we can all fight the flu. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Eric Darnell. This is David Reagan. Jamie McMurray. This is Carl Edwards here for RED. The entertainment industry's voice for road safety. Want to make a difference? It's simple. Be responsible. Plan ahead. Designate before you celebrate. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. Drive my car. Yes, I'm gonna be a, star. a public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. This is Bullet Bob Armstrong. I'm Southern born, Southern bred, and I never miss Beyond Ringside. Chris, you're not acting like a grown up in our relationship. M2, M2. There's your comic book collection, the race car bed. I'm young at heart, but I put money into my 401k every paycheck. I'm taking control over my financial life, and that feels pretty grown up to me. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Are those footy pajamas? This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. The odds of becoming a signed artist and having three number one albums? One in 100 million. The odds of going on to win six Grammy Awards? One in 1.4 million. The odds of this performer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 110. I'm Tony Braxton, and I encourage you to learn the signs of autism at AutismSpeaks.org. Autism Speaks. It's time to listen. Brought to you by Autism Speaks in the Ad Council. It is with sound mind and body that I, James Fredericks III, after fighting with all direct family members for decades, leave my entire fortune of $32 million to the one friend I had in the end, the package delivery guy, Matt Songer. Woohoo! Yeah! I had a feeling about this. Uh-huh! I'm rich! Oh, this cannot be happening. Actually, it's not happening. What? what And it never will. I don't get it. There aren't even people here. That's just one of those murmuring sound effects. Seriously? Listen, if you want to have money in your future, don't rely on luck. Huh. Put 10 bucks away each month. Cook once in a while instead of eating out. Okay. Pay down your high-interest credit cards. Right. Small changes today, big bucks tomorrow. So, no inheritance? Uh, no. Go to feedthepig.org for more free ideas. Feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. And just to be clear, no inheritance, right? Eight. I deliver your Sunday paper every week. Seven. We work on the same floor. One in eight Americans is struggling with hunger. Six. Our kids walk to school together every day. Including millions of children and seniors. Five. We chat in the elevator at work sometimes. Four. I'm your cashier at the grocery store. Who's the one in eight in your life that needs help? You can make a difference through Feeding America at feedingamerica.org slash one in eight. A public service announcement brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Ryan Seacrest for RAD. Over 300 people in this country are killed every week by a drunk driver. That's the equivalent of two 747 plane crashes every single week. And the problem isn't going away unless we all do our part to stop it. So if you see someone who's about to drive after drinking, get the keys. Don't leave it up to anyone else. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service announcement brought to you by RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters and the Ad Council. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bill Barons, and you're watching, you're listening, you're experiencing Beyond Ringside, and you are a better person for it. Trust me. 
And we are back live on a Sunday night. 21 minutes before the top of the hour and beyond ringside. Glad to have you on board. Fast Eddie Lane on this side of the control panel. Mabo, come on back in. I never left, so there's no reason for me to come on back in. Actually, we all did leave, so we all come back in one at a time. We, <laughs> we can, That's what she said. Yeah, I think that is what she said. Wicked, come on back in. And you've heard that before. <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, let's just remind everybody that Fast Eddie Lane was actually the voice of Metal Lark Lemon on the Harlem Globetrotters cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> that almost that ranks about thirty-five steps below Casey Kasem being the voice of Robin and Shaggy. So <laughs> I'll I'll will take that one. Um, I really will. Um, 20 minutes before the top of the hour, first off, uh, chat stream is open. You stream open. YouTube will be taken care of a little bit later. Also, um, if you're listening through the Ustream feed and it's not the greatest in the world, go over to www.beyondringside.com. And the live show is being fed through there. I uh, want to remind everybody, a little bit later in the night, I will be hosting GCW Radio. You can catch that through beyondringside.com as well. And you can also catch recent episodes and interviews from Beyond Ringside 24-7 through beyondringside.com Look us up on the Shoutcast Radio Network. We are there. You can uh, utilize uh, Winamp Windows Media Player um, you can find it through iTunes and launch it through there as well. So we're accessible all the way across the board. Thank you to everybody who's been uh, downloading the recent episodes via Podomatic and the podcast through iTunes as well. Um, yeah, we're definitely doing everything we can to keep the spirit going in more ways than one. Now, I made this reference in seg one, and we're finally going to hit this in this uh, in this segment. <laughs> you yeah, really, it happens that way sometimes. We all get tangentized, and that's a word that I'm going to go ahead and have trademarked. Tangentized. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! <laughs> yeah, really. Um, we make a reference to. Oh, I'm sorry. We make a reference to certain moves being utilized as finishers and how they should maintain that sanctity as finishers. Like Ted getting his crap in his pants? Yeah, pretty much. Now, in my opinion, the DDT that Randy Orton uses, where he uses the second rope for leverage, is not a turning point move, is not a setup move. That should be a finishing move because yeah. you, you've got the person... In a position, you've got the drama. That should be a heel finisher, not a babyface setup for the RKO. That should be genuinely a heel finisher. I don't care who you are in this industry because you've got the person in a position to where they are about to have their face smashed through the mat at 21 feet per second. And plain and simple, that is a dramatic buildup move. I don't think that should be a setup. That should be a finisher. Wicked agree or disagree? Oh, of course I agree. Eddie, you and I have had this conversation. We have seen people try to do this. It is beyond me that a babyface uses the ropes for anything. That's not what babyfaces do. That's what heels do. Not only is it is it a DDT. The guy is, or woman, because there are some women that use this, now I've seen Pandora use this as they finish, thank God. And you put them up on the middle rope, and then you use it. You're adding something to it when you do that. That's the whole point of putting them up there. And then all this proves is how weak Randy Orton is, and that's what they don't understand. Throw up, man. That looks cool. That looks cool. You just had somebody kick out of a DDT. Name a time that somebody kicked out of Jake Snake Roberts' DDT. Did not happen. Unless it was Hulk Hogan. Uh, Hogan's the only person, and I've only seen him do it once. So, and, and it's, it's all about protecting yourselves. If these idiots want to go out, and if they want to make themselves look weak as hell, let them. As for everyone I manage, they know better. If there's a DDT involved, it better be the finish. And if you kick out of it, oh, God, have mercy on your soul, because the wicked nemesis will not. Mabo, come on in. Your thoughts? Yeah. Once again, I hate to say, you know, flashback to the to the uh, the past there, back to the future, Marty McFly. The future, you know, Lorraine, little Lorraine Baines McFly. But um, Jake the Snake, you know, you just brought him up. Jake the Snake, DDT finish. You know, there were others who used the DDT as a finisher. 
Now, I mean, I have, and I can I can see and agree with you know, like a a quick like a quick kind of snap DDT or whatever, just to you know, kind of save your save your ass, so to speak. Just a you know something like that. A little quick reverse there, snap bam. You know, and both guys are down. The SOS but DDT. The or, or, the or you talking about like the Rock? No, the quick. You know, something, well, something like that. Just like a quick, you know, just like well, like you know, you uh, your baby face has been, you know, they've been taking hit after hit after hit. Goes, you know, ducks clothesline, maybe hits a little, you know, quick boot, and then you know, hits it with a DDT. Just something simple. But like a, you know, if you're gonna sit there and use it, you know, as a as a primary weapon, but not as a finisher, I think it's, you know, it it shouldn't. If, if you give somebody the DDT, unless you're going to go for the immediate cover, it definitely should not be used, and then especially kicked out of. I agree. That's just that's just Second pointless. The pile driver. The pile driver is the. Oh God! A pile driver should always always be a finisher or a, a, a way to cripple somebody. And yeah. you see, and, and I've seen people do this. I've seen people under mask, and I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Joey Sartain was under a mask working Ooh. for uh, to the AWA Mumford. Whenever we made our, uh, re- whenever Pandora and I made our return to GCW that night, now he had some little outlaw kid that I don't care his name, and I'm, I darn sure wouldn't say it because I don't want to put the kid over. Joey Sartain under a mask because somebody had canceled the show hits a cradle pile driver on a kid who's an outlaw worker out of Gadsden, hits this on the kid. And the kid kicks out. Oh, I thought you were going to say skinny, a buck oh five, and blonde hair. He is. He was little. He was smaller than that. But he kicks out of it clean. Damon Taz, being the vet, goes backstage and pulls Sartain aside and said, why did you do that? Why would you use a prominent move? And every vet should do this. And this is a testament to Damon Freaking Taz, being a true veteran, he says you don't ever use a pile driver as a double down or somebody unless it's for cover and definitely under a jobber mask. You knew that going out there that you were just going to job. You knew this. You don't hit anything like that, and that's the mentality people have. And that's nothing to get Sartain. But he he should have known better. He should have known better. It's like him trying to do the angle slam or whatever the hell he calls it on Tomb. He says he does it. He didn't try to hit it on Tomb, but everybody else says he did. You have to do this. The angle slam is another one. It, it's quick. It's something that in the angle slam, boom, you hit it. You're right there on them for a pin. But the pile driver, the DDT, should definitely, always, always, and especially as Mabel said, the pile driver should be the finish. And that's not the mentality people have. People, are like, dude, it looks cool if I hit a pile driver from the top rope. Are you kidding me? And I've seen that done. I've yeah. seen pile drivers done from the top rope and it not be the finish. God, please. I'm now, not going to say the guy's name, but it's somebody that we've all watched and we all like the guy, but he's done it. Now, let me let me slide this reference in. I remember, I think it was during the Nitro era, when Brad Armstrong was given the um, U.S. title push. Who? Brad Armstrong. Oh, I thought you said Lance Armstrong. I no. Was like, what? No, Brad who also did Candyman and Commando and all that other crap. Um, oh, wait, was this when he was Buzzkill? No. I, no. no oh, this was, that. was this No Limit Soldier, Brad? B.A.? Was this B.A.? This was no. just... No, he was still wearing the red, white, and blue jacket. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's so funny. I forgot all about that. No, I didn't. Um, but by the same <laughs> token... Blue with the BA. When, when Brad was being... When Brad was given that singles push before the, um, before the uh, Soldier gimmick, um, he was using a side Russian leg, leg sweep for his finisher. And the way that Brad hit that side Russian was a thing of beauty because he would go ahead and lock it in, one, two, slam, and he would immediately hit the float over, cradle the leg, hook the neck, one, two, three. I, to me, that is a beautiful finisher. Oh, dude, I mean, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, and I agree, dude. Like, there are very few people that I've seen in my tenure of watching pro wrestling that can take a, a, a side Russian leg sweep and and make it into a finisher and right and I'm not talking like you know the stroke or or any of the other weird variations that there are I'm talking about a legitimate side Russian leg sweep Brad Armstrong 
testament to him and his wonderful golden mullet back in the day, uh, he could honestly make something that simple, not only a finisher, but a believable finisher. Continue, sir. Didn't mean to interrupt. Now, I'll also say this, and this is a testament to Brad and his professionalism in the ring and his skill set. I'll just, I won't say skill set. I'll just say his skills. Because there is no move that Brad could not hit and make look good. The man, long before anybody would call themselves having the best drop kick in the industry, with all due respect to Bob Holly, Brad Armstrong had one of the smoothest drop kicks that you will ever see in this industry. And I would say this even if I didn't know him that well. I've known Brad for years. I've worked with him on a ton of cards and or shows and live events. From that vantage point, you know, Brad whether it was in Georgia Championship Wrestling, Southeastern Championship Wrestling, NWA, Crockett, um, World Championship, um, all the way up to the Nitro era. And to me, Brad Armstrong is one of the most underrated and overlooked talents that this industry has ever had. I mean, he's got a great babyface persona. He's got a good heel persona. He's got a great skill set, knows a crap ton of moves in the ring knows how to tell the story, understands understand psychology, duh, look who his dad is, Bullet Bob Armstrong. Of course, you've got a genuine icon of this industry as your father and mentor in this business. Of course you better understand exactly what this game's all about. But to me... And, and what it's about, though, and, and you kind of touched on that, it's basics. Brad Armstrong is great. Not good, he's great at basics. When your basics are great... Everything else is going to fall into place. And to me, and we've all worked, we've all worked thousands of shows with the Armstrongs. Yes. Eddie, you've worked with them on, on, on a continuous basis for about two years, you know. And I've worked with them all on and off, even uh, Road Dog. Dude, I worked with the Armstrong family back in my first year in this business. Well, I'm talking about, you know, since you and I have known yeah, each other. Know, right. Because right, we, we both worked the same shows with them. And uh, their basics are down pat. <laughs> for the fact that that Bullet Bob is eight hundred and forty two thousand years old and has the hardest chop the man legitimately almost broke my back the first time I managed against him because my dumbass brother, Orion Bishop, told him, Oh, he doesn't know he doesn't know how to bump and I said, Dude, you're a complete moron. We'd been in the business <laughs> we'd been in the business four months. And Brad Arm and uh, Bullet Bob chopped me so hard he knocked me into the railing. At RWA, and about broke my back. All to send a message. All to send a message. But the thing about it is, their basics. The entire family's basics are great. Oh yeah. And that what separates them. And if everybody would take care of their basics, the rest is going to fall into place. To have a great house, you have to have a solid foundation. And people forget about that. Yes. You're like, what's a wrist like? Uh, I don't know, but I could do a flip off the top rope. <laughs> I love Chip Day to death. Chip Day does the Brad Armstrong side rest and leg sweep. Yeah, but it's not a finish. Everybody, you know, people kick out of it. Well, it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. Now, if you've got somebody that you're working who is larger, can you effectively use the side Russian as a finisher? Yes. Well, 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 Eddie, well, think about how that Russian leg sweep that we're talking about. Okay, the Russian leg sweep we're talking about. Let's let's really stress this out for people that are you know listening to us. The side Russian leg sweep that Eddie is referring to and Babo. Is a Russian leg sweep where he would hit, where you would go on the side, take them back, and as soon as he hit the mat, he would flip over in one continuous motion, right. no wasted motion, and would hook the leg. That's the greatest part. One continuous motion. Boom, on the mat, flip over, hook the leg, cradle, one, two, three. That's what made that legitimate. It was all basic stuff. Right. I've seen a Ryan Bishop beat people with a side headlock, a side headlock takedown. Because it was maneuvered right, and people believed it. Right. He beat Michael Judas like that with a side Russian. Oh, I mean, with a side headlock -like takedown. Just boom! It just happens. It's because when it's one continuous motion, that's what wrestling's about, and people forget about that. People forget that. Okay, let's say you get kicked. <laughs> if somebody punches you, and you you sell forward, or these people that take drop kicks, and then they fall face first. Why would you fall face first on a drop kick? The only way I fall face first on a drop kick is if I'm look if I'm looking like I'm taking it from the side and I spin sell it. You should never take a drop kick face first unless no. you hit the unless you hit the turnbuckle and then fall off. 
No, I'm saying if I spin sell it, if it, if I'm making it look like they're coming at me from the side and one foot catches me on the side of the face, one catches me on the shoulder, then I'm not going to do a side bump. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a spin around and let and go ahead and go take the face bump on that. Uh, I don't know about you, but when somebody when somebody hits me with a drop kick, it, they really hit me. I don't say if to make it seem like anything. They just do it. It's if, not choreographed for me, Eddie. Now I don't know about you. No, if they hit it properly, then I'm going to do a momentum sell. Yes, Mabo, come on in. Shut up! <laughs> you bigger like Troy Mays. Well, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't do it like that. Well, I would do it like this. I wouldn't do it like that. Shut up and continue your stories, but quit arguing. Now, also, one other move that comes to mind when I think about the side rushing from Brad is Magnum TA and the belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Because remember, when Magnum would hit the belly-to-belly, -belly, he would immediately go for the float over, catch it, one, two, three, win. Of course, we all know that Magnum, I don't think, ever on television, never worked a match over a minute and a half to begin with. But And that's no disrespect to Paul Garner or any of the other guys who sold that damn move for him. But they want... But, and here's the thing, on the belly to belly, that is the closest thing you actually had to someone looking like a power babyface, other than the Road Warriors. Because of the fact that you had everything in place where Magnum didn't have to sell on television. The factor was to get, make him look strong, make him look good, the ladies are going to love him, make him look credible to the guys to where they're not going to sit back and go, oh, he's just a boy toy for the girls. You had to do something, and for that, for him to be able to hit that belly-to-belly -belly suplex, hit the float, and make it look as credible and believable and solid as it did, that one move right there put him over to most of the guy, the male fans, most of the guys, as a power face for the ending. Now, when he would go into programs with Arn Anderson, Ric Flair, Tully Blanchard, or do tag team matches against the Midnights, um, yeah, then of course he would turn around and bump and sell, you know. All of the above, bump, feed, sell. I'll take your pick on the use of the terminology, but the way it looks to me is the way it's. You've got to have that credibility in the move. Agree or disagree? Maybe I'll go to you first. Magnum who? Magnum. No, I'm just kidding. I was just kidding. No, I know. I know Magnum TA, and I was daggone shame that career got short because I, he was up to be the NWA World Champion at one point. Um, here, you know, I mean, as far as babyface goes. Like you said, with that belly to belly, uh, definitely. I mean, I definitely remember when Shane Douglas went back to ECW uh, before leaving for WCW, and I think he came back to ECW and then left. Uh, anyway, um, he was another one that would hit that hit, hit the belly to belly. He called it the Pittsburgh Plunge for some reason. And it's right, just kind of a stupid name, but um, he was another one that he would grab you, spin, hit it, pin you. You know. So, yeah. Yeah, the continuity has to be there. Wicked, come on in. Well, I don't know about you, but no. <laughs> yeah. The belly to belly was nice, but I mean, you know, as you said, but also the way that TA would do it, and, and even Shane, when they did it, they would, the, the react, like, when they would, they would literally, like, take you. When Taz, that's what people don't understand, when Taz and Kurt Angle give you the belly to belly, they do it all. I know we're breaking k -fade, but it's all in them. Not when T.A. did it. T.A. would throw you like a ragdoll and Shane Douglas, and it was just that ragdoll effect where anybody's ever taken a bump. You want to be controlled. Although Taz and Kurt Angle, it looks like they're killing you, they're really protecting you in what yes. they do. They are probably two of the best at protecting people, and Sabu, he broke his neck on his own. See, because every once in a while you get carried away... <laughs> <laughs> you lose track of the law of gravity. And gravity, remember, it's not a concept, kids. Reality is a concept. Gravity is a freaking law. Um, gravity kills. Gravity Falls debuts tomorrow night on Disney XD. Hey, 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 that's a good show. It has a girl from 30 Rock, and it's on uh, the Daily Show that does the voice of the little girl. Oh, and, them chopping, and, and them chopping Larry... Uh, God, what's his name? Uh, Larry King's head off as a wax statue. That was great. I laughed. 
Hey, there's Perry. Okay. Um, tell you what, but there's a ton of shows I want to touch on real quick as far as um, you know, getting ideas, thoughts, predictions, early thoughts. Let's go ahead and take about a four-minute break. We're going to be back right here on Beyond Ringside right after this. When planning your next party or special event, insist on the best. Full Range Entertainment is a professional entertainment company providing a full range of services. From professional disc jockeys and MCs to catering and photography, when the details of your special day must be perfect, call us first. Wedding receptions, corporate parties, school functions, birthday celebrations, and more. We We also have Birmingham's largest selection of karaoke tracks available. With over 40 years combined experience, Full Range Entertainment can provide you with the talent and professionalism you need and deserve to make your next event one you'll never forget. For more information on the full range of services we offer, call 533-HITS, that's 533-HITS, or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com. Most days go by without a whole lot of surprises. But what if a disaster strikes without warning? What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? Would you be prepared? Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed. Learn how at www.ready.gov. Brought to you by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Ozzy Osbourne. For many years, you know I've had a drink problem and I'm, I'm trying to battle that problem every single day. But one thing I don't do, I don't drive my car when I'm drinking. I get someone to drive me. Do not drink and drive. It's the stupidest thing. If you drink, just don't drive. Not only are you going to hurt yourself, you may hurt some other person and you wouldn't want that on your conscience, would you? A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Ranger Station, Ranger speaking. Hi, um, I want to report a bear sighting. Location? My front door. Oh, really? And did the bear knock or use the doorbell? He used the doorbell. It was Smokey Bear. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, my husband was burning leaves in the yard. He just came inside for a second. Not a good idea. Smokey said the same thing. He said to never leave a fire unattended because it could lead to a wildfire. Yeah, but if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. Smokey said that too. We go way back. I knew him when he was just a cub. Oh, how cute. Rangers are many things, ma'am, but cute isn't one of them. Have a nice day. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference. Because nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Brought to you by Smokey Bear, the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hi, I'm Drew Brees, NFL quarterback for the New Orleans Saints, here with Bugs Bunny to remind you to get moving every day. Because when you get moving an hour a day, you fuel your body and your mind. So what do you like to throw around the football like Drew? Skateboard, ride a bike, or dance in your room. Just move it your way. And be a player. Get up and play an hour a day, Doc. Check out how to be a player at letsmove.gov. Head online to get tips on great ways to get moving every day. At letsmove.gov. A message from the Ad Council and HHS. This is Angel, half of the Double Trouble Morning Team on Distant Thunder Radio, and you are locked in to Beyond Ringside. Confessions of a Potentially Perfect Parent, brought to you by AdoptUsKids.org. I know more about cooking dinner for a party of 12 than about packing a lunch for a 12-year-old. I know kids like things like fish sticks. Filets, I get, but sticks? Maybe we can just compromise on mac and cheese. Can you make that with Bree? You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Call 1-888-200-4005 or visit AdoptUsKids.org for more information. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt Us Kids, and the Ad Council. Foreclosure is hard on every member of the family, but your family is not alone. If you're struggling with your mortgage, there is help. To learn about the government's Making Home Affordable program, visit makinghomeaffordable.gov or call 1-888-995-HOPE to speak to a HUD-approved housing counselor. It's free of charge. Visit makinghomeaffordable.gov or call 1-888-995-HOPE today. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury, HUD, NeighborWorks America, and the Ad Council. This is Angel Orsini. This is the human hand grenade, Danny Only. This is Dirty Dutch Mantel. This is Liz Savage. This, this is Vinny O'Brien, 2010 Golden Glove Champion. This is Gabe Sapolsky from Dragon Gate USA and Evolve Pro Wrestling. And you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. Music 
place. The microphones go hot, and we are back live on a Sunday night. Welcome back into Beyond Ringside Live, 704 Central Standard Time, 804 Eastern. Fast Eddie Lane behind the control panel. Wicked Nemesis, welcome back. Trogdar. Troglodyte. Mabo, welcome back. Mark Lar. Haven't heard that word in forever and a day. Spinning around real quick. Um, thank you to everybody who has been popping through the chat room. Letter U stream TV slash channel slash beyond dash ringside dash live. Um, thank you to everybody who's been listening through the Facebook fan page. Facebook.com slash beyond ringside live. Uh, a couple of things I want to hit on real quick. Next Saturday. <clears throat> sorry. Not next Saturday. I'm going to jump ahead because I can. Chikara, Reading, Pennsylvania, 1900 Center Avenue. They're going to have a very, very solid lineup coming up. I mean, you've got everybody from Dasher Hatfield, Green Ant, Icarus, um, Hallow Wicked. Sugar Dunkerton is back with Chikara. Um, haven't had a chance to really catch that much of what they've been as far as the video updates go. Now, Well, Eddie, yes. if you want to get video updates, then it's simple. You can either go to their website, ChikaraPro.com, or their YouTube channel and watch the all the various Chikara updates that they have. Everything. I don't know if they have the rights to do a Chikara podcast at GoGo anymore, but I know they've got the Barbershop window, I believe it's called, or the Barbershop. They've got several updates. Just go to their YouTube channel and or their website for all of your Chikara needs. <laughs> And Lightning Mike Quackenbush is smiling and waving at Mabel going, thank you. Great job, dude. <laughs> we haven't we haven't actually had uh, Quackenbush on this year. We actually need to sit down and try to see if we can get him back on. Uh, that's working. Just keep you under britches on there, Slick. Not a problem. And like I said, next Saturday, the iPay-Per-View, Ring of Honor, Boiling Point, Steam versus Kingston. They got some great matches lined up for this one. Of course, ROH World Championship match. Kevin Steen defending against Chikara Grand Champion Eddie Kingston. Tag Team War. And I'm looking for this. That should be a fun match to watch. The Briscoes, Jay and Mark Dim Boys. Excuse me. Hashtag Dim Boys. That's uh, right, son. Get it right, man. Get it right. Of course. Taking on the Zombie Princess, Jimmy Jacobs, which is funny as hell that he's going that direction. And the King of Old School, Steve Carino. Let me get y'all's insights on this match. Wicked, you slide in first. I have no idea that watch Ring of Honor, even though Corey Hollis is about to start working for him. Congratulations, Corey Hollis. Really? Congratulations, Corey Hollis, on that one. Mabo, your thoughts? Oh, no. You know, Carino and Jacobs have had some wars in, in, at Ring of Honor and various other places. And, you know, nobody can nobody can question the dominance of, of them boys. Or, you know, so it's going to be a good match. Um, they, You know, Carino and Jacobs... They've fought, they've teamed, they've loved, they've hated, they've made out. <laughs> I think they even shared a, a lemon meringue pie recipe once. I, I'm not sure, though. Scary thing. Uh, but, you know, you, you can't deny the uh, veteranosity, that's a word, I just made it up, of one Steve Carino, you know, king of old school. Um, the Jimmy Jacobs, you know, no slouch. He's been around the block several times. So... You know, it's 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 going to be it's going to be a pretty pretty amazing match. Now, you know, Carino, Jacobs, not a regular tag team, but they know each other well. Yes, both both biblically and in the ring. So, I think it's going to be a really good match. Uh, I look for Dem Boys as long as the chicanery doesn't get too crazy. Uh, Dem Boys to walk away mainly because it's Dem Boys, and I share the name with the same name as one of them, and and the guy's missing teeth. So. Actually, you kind of share the initials of one of them, so we'll take that one step further. Um, mm, well, I don't know his middle name. I'm not a Mark. Well, I am, but I'm not. <laughs> Mark Briscoe, Mark Bowman, MB. Yes, but I don't know his middle name, so you can't say we share, share a full initial. I said to a degree. Thanks for playing. Um, uh, I prefer two right guard. <clears throat> there you go. One match that I'm really kind of curious to see how they're going to put this together, but and it would actually, I think this one could actually be a sleeper match, so to speak, and I'm not being denigratory when I'm saying that. That is a word, look it up. The Mixed Tag Team Grudge Match, Die Hard Eddie Edwards and the Queen of Wrestling, Sarah Del Rey. Sarah is still cool as hell to watch work. Versus the Prodigy Mike Bennett and the First Lady of ROH, Maria Kanellis. Now, if that tag is not mislabeled, I don't know what is, because I think you would actually have to put Del Rey as the um, the first lady of ROH, 
all of the above. Well, uh, but if you're not in there regularly, then you can't be the first lady. True, and they've pretty much taken Maria Canellis and put her on television every chance they've got, including replays. And once again, I do like to thank ROH for not digitizing the almost non-existent ass of Maria Canellis. But what is there is there. Um, well, let's see. Here's the thing. Well, no, go ahead. I'm not no, continue. Now. I like this. Go ahead. No, no, I'm not going to spoil anything. So you just keep me talking. Okay. Um, I'm trying. Let to me say something about that really quick. Though. Bring it on. Uh, why is Sarah Del Rey the first woman of wrestling, or, or I'm sorry, the queen of wrestling? Wouldn't that be Tasha Simone, since she is, of course, the NWA Women's World Champion? I think she, I think Sarah Del Rey should be the first woman of Ring of Honor, and it should she should not be labeled the queen of wrestling because the queen of wrestling is the NWA Women's World Champion Tasha Simone. I'm just saying. I would love to see you bring up Tasha, good friend of ours here on Beyond Ringside. But no, seriously, I'm asking a question too. Should Sarah Dorothy be the queen of wrestling? For ROH billing purposes, I can see why they would do that. But in the overall grand scheme of things, I can't. I I have to agree, Wicked. Um, I can't really call her that, Mabo. Uh, I'm not going to do anything that disagrees with Tasha Simone. I'm not stupid. (laughs) <laughs> and knowing the fact that you know there's the opportunity to finally you got obviously wicked has met her several times wicked or uh, eddie i think you've met her a couple times this would probably this will be my first meeting if i can make it to the pell city show i'm not stupid so i'm not going to give her a reason to punch me in the face so i'm going to say that yes tasha simone should be the queen <laughs> of wrestling <laughs> <laughs> because I'm pretty and I don't want to not be pretty. Now the match or the the encounter that Mabo is talking about is actually in reference what to What did you just call me, son? What, Mabo Mabo? Get it right. You know how it's pronounced. Don't let me come over there and smack you faced Edie Lalani Laney Laluni. Get it right, son. I'm Maybe just going over there. there. I actually threw that one in there, A, to see if you would hear it, and B, because half the rest of the world does make the A the little house thing on instead of a long A. The house thing? What? Yeah, the A-H sound instead of the long A sound. The, the house thing? Really? He cannot admit that he actually stumbled on his words. He did. No, actually, did. I, pre- I, said, it, I said Mabo on, um, actually on purpose. I'm sorry. Mabo. Mabo boobles. <laughs> so like, that's only part of Mudbone's incantation. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reference that is being made to the GCW Pell City show is going to be Saturday night, August the 18th in Pell City, Alabama, under the banner of Global Championship Wrestling. You are going to have a women's tag team challenge match, which, folks, this match could very easily be worth the price of admission for not just one but three shows because you have Nina Monet an up and comer in this business who has a dream tag team partner in the multi-time National Wrestling Alliance World Women's Champion Tasha Simone La Reina del Pal Driver and they will be taking on the Island Girl Tracy Taylor and Calm Like a Bomb Pandora, managed by our very own architect of intellect, Enoch Desarian, Wicked Nemesis. Ooh, did I just use both names in one sentence? I try not to confuse people. Just call him Wicked Nemesis. Everything's good. Don't I'm surprised ever, you didn't mispronounce it either. And no, well, actually, I was going to go ahead and say, and please, for the love of God, if you meet him in public, don't use his shoot name. Don't use his real name. Do not call him the Wicked Nemesis. He does get upset when you do that. Um, so, like I said, leave the shoot names out of this. But from this vantage point, you have got, like I said, Nina Monet is working hard to develop her body of work, to build her reputation, and to become better match by match by match. She's off to a good start. And having the NWA Women's World Champion Tasha Simone as a tag team partner cannot hurt. It can definitely help. And I will also venture to say this. Somebody on August the 18th is in a position to learn not only, and I'm going to steal Rick's phrase, the wrestling legend, excuse me, the wrestling lesson of a lifetime, but also 
a very valuable life lesson as it pertains to professional wrestling. Now, I'm just going to – we're going to go ahead and cover a couple more shows, but I want to come back to this in just a minute. We're going 15 after the hour real quick. Next Sunday night, Impact Wrestling, TNA, continuing their 10-year celebration, has – Hardcore Justice, the pay-per-view. Hardcore Justice! There you go. Headlining this card, World Heavyweight Championship match, the rematch, Bobby Roode challenging Austin Aries, the greatest man who ever lived. Um, If this match does not set an impossible precedent, I'm going to be surprised because their, their original matchup where Aries won the title at Destination X... I thoroughly enjoyed that match. I've actually watched, gone back and watched it three times because the match was fun to watch. It was great to see. The Bound for Glory ladder match is one that is actually just a nice little curveball in there. Because remember, they opened up the BFG series with the Battle Royal worth 20 points. And you go from there, you've got, you're getting Skype messages from hell, aren't you, Wicked? Because I hear the drip drip. Oh God! I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm, on this, this tablet, unfortunately, anytime somebody gives me a direct message, and think goes bloop bloop, I'm trying to turn it off. I'm sorry, dude. It's I'm okay. Awesome. Don't. I'm just. I'm just popping shops. Don't worry about it. Um, but I'm really looking forward to this because you've got four great workers in this match and four consummate professionals: AJ Styles, Kurt Angle, Christopher Daniels, and Samoa Joe. This is going to be one of those situations where, honestly, I swear, don't blink because if you do, you're going to miss half the match. Uh, Mabo, your thoughts? Oh, I mean, if there's four guys you want, I mean, I'm kind of concerned, you know, Kurt still with the neck and the stuff and the thing. But if there's four guys you wanted doing a ladder match, it would be the, you know what, just stand there and watch me. Just stand there and watch me get killed, you jerk. Um, <laughs> if there's four four guys you would want working a ladder match, it would be these four guys. I mean, you know, you know AJ and Daniels are going to do the crazy, crazy Joe's going to be there for the muscle. Kurt's got the you know the whole tech thing going, and Kurt can fly too. Kurt can fly too, so no, no disrespect there. So yeah, definitely, man. It's like I said, they couldn't have picked four better guys to put in a ladder match than these four. Wicked, your thoughts? All four of those guys, right there, are the faces. I don't care what anybody tells you of TNA, even Angle. Those four guys don't need a ladder in that match. If this was just a four-way dance, if this was a tag match, this would be one of the best one of the best matches. As you said, AJ and Christopher Daniels can fly with some of the best of them. Samoa Joe can fly with some of the best of them being big. And then you have the Olympic gold medalist. The greatest wrestler of our generation, hands down. Yes. And the greatest wrestler of all time, sorry, Danny Hodge. Kurt Angle never bet against the gold, especially during Olympic time. I think that every year when the Olympics come around, especially the Summer Olympics, I think Kurt Angle, I I don't know, maybe he's plugged into the Olympic matrix or something because he always has some of his best matches during Olympic time, and that's a shoot. And and I think that this is going to be one of the match of the year candidates. It's not going to be the September 8th match, you know, Tasha and Pandora, but still it's going to be pretty close. Now, also another one to keep your eye on, and I'm loving how they're working the BFG series into the Hardcore Justice theme. Um, Because of the tables match, worth 20 points, Jeff Hardy, James Storm, Bully Ray, and Robbie E. Um, I see James Storm, hands down, taking 20 points. I mean, the only other person in this match that I could see pulling off the tables win would be actually Bully Ray. Mabo, your um, your consideration. Well, once again, I'm going to say three out of the four this time. Um, I mean, how many times have we watched Je- oh God! I just almost rolled off the couch. Um, that has been an awesome segment right there. This week on Beyond Ringside, maybe I'll roll off the couch. Ah! Anyway, um, how many times have we? How many matches? How many times have we seen? You know, Bully Ray and Jeff Hardy in some way, shape, form, or fashion involved in a table match. So I mean, these these guys have got the table match down pat. You know, biggity bam. Um, James Storm. He's another one that. You know, I, I wouldn't have so much put him in a ladder match, but he's definitely one of those guys that fit the 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 archetype of, of a table match. You know, you, I, you don't see him doing too much crazy stuff coming off a ladder, but you damn sure bet he can, you know, super kick somebody through a 
standing standing table or at least do a leg drop or a body splash or something. Robbie E, uh, <laughs> they're just going to beat the hell that poor kid. I'm sorry. <laughs> he's, he's the one. He's the one right now, I guarantee you, that's going to take the wackadoo Jeff Hardy bump somehow, <laughs> some way. I mean, whether it be to get the points for Jeff Hardy or, or if Jeff Hardy, I say Bubba Ray, I say Bully Ray, Bubba Ray, I'm going to call him Bubba Ray. Piss off TNA. Um, <laughs> I'm going to call him Bubba Ray. I think Bubba, I, I, th- I think he, he's going to get this. I mean, you know, he's he's behind, and this would kind of help bring him, you know, make the race a little bit more even. And since he's just, from what I heard, because there was rumor that he and Devon were uh, coming to the end of their contracts, that's not me being a mark or whatever. That's just me legitimately reading what, you know, what has been put out there. Um, not like, you know, he was doing lines of coke off of freaking Serena's butt. Uh, so, but they're saying that he re-signed, which, Eddie, I can't remember if it was you and I that talked about it last week on air or off air. Um, but right now, Bubba is in the middle of a, just a ridiculously monster, you know, push, which he deserves. Uh, um, so I think he might actually, you know, walk away with the points, but regardless of whether it's Hardy or or Bubba, <laughs> Robbie E is going to be on the receiving end of this this table commencing going throughing thing. Wicked nemesis. Let's have a moment of silence for Robbie. She. Okay, Bully Ray. Bully Ray is phenomenal. Bully Ray, as you said, deserves exactly what he's got. Even deserves has nothing to do with it. The guy can work. The guy's a great heel. The guy makes people hate him. And he's one of the best. To me, he is one half of the greatest tag team of all time. You guys, I've said this, the Dudley Boys are the greatest tag team ever. Now, yeah, I'll I'll pull my prediction out next week. Um, And you've got a BFG series match, 20 points to the winner, falls count anywhere. Anderson, RVD, The Pope, and Magnus. This should be fun to watch. It really should, because you've got four contrasting styles in there. Now, I will say that Anderson and Magnus match up very well style for style. Um, Pope, since his comeback off the project, has just, I'm, I'm, he's not really looking like the same Pope. At least not to Why's me. Why's it going to be projects? Why's it going to be projects when you talk about the Pope? Why? Because he's black? Why, Eddie? Why? What you trying to get at, Eddie? That's messed up, yo. Why ask why? Try bud dry. Mabo, your thoughts. Well, this is basically the leftovers of the BFG peoples. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, and these are the ones you want to throw in the the, the false count anywhere. We know, we all know RVD's past of hardcore action, so to speak, and I'm not just talking about the alleged video. Just kidding. Um, maybe. Allegedly. Uh, but... You know, and if, if Pope, I mean, for you know, a lot of people don't remember when he was Elijah Burke in the new ECW. Tuesday. Uh, he had some dealings and some going-ons with some hardcore matches. I mean, stood toe-to-toe with Tommy Dreamer and various uh, Balls Mahoney, all that stuff. So, you know, his whether this will break down into a hardcore false count anywhere, which, I mean, let's be honest. If it's a false count anywhere, can you really get disqualified? So why not just go ahead and, and, and just bring in weapons? I, I don't know. They're going to. Wicked Nemesis. Never Whoop. bet against the stoner. Yep. Whoop. Sorry, I had it on mute. This time, that's the only sound that makes poop. Uh, <laughs> RVD, uh, you, know, you know, this is a lot. 20 points is a lot for just one match for this series. So kudos to them for making this really, really mean something. I think they have done a great job of building up the BFG series to this point from what I have seen on TNA. And I think that incorporating the live events as well as the pay-per-views and um, everything with the um, da, 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 open fight night, I think they've done a remarkable job on that. So my hat's off to Impact Wrestling for really turning the corner and getting things in proper perspective. Um, I hate to be the one who always says it like this, but... I don't think I'm the only one who says it like this. I am just used to TNA taking two steps forward and eight steps back. 
So I, forgive me if I'm sitting back with guarded optimism yet again when it comes to something with TNA. And, you know, just like I said, I think the appropriate term is guarded optimism. Um, the match that I'm really paying no attention to, believe it or not, is the knockouts title match. I really hope they put the belt back on Madison Rain, and I'll emphasize that a little bit more next week. Maybo? Uh, yeah. It, to me, I'm sorry, and I'll just go ahead and say this. No, I don't want to join your group. Leave me alone. Um, that's not what I wanted to say. There you go. What I want to say is, at this point, to me, the knockouts division just doesn't mean the same as it did, you know, a couple of years ago. It really so doesn't. So I really could care less about the knockouts and what goes on. It's 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 sad to say. I mean, you got good good talent leaving because they're you know they're trying to you know short sheet them so to speak on the contracts so and then what's left and don't get me wrong what's left is good talent but it's just I it's not like the original days of Kong and Gail Kim and when Dutch Mantel uh, was booking the knockouts yeah when when Dutch was when Dutch had the the uh when Dutch was doing the booking for the for the women's and, and you could read all about how he came up with the idea along with Jeff Jarrett and Vince Russo and a couple of others in his book, The World According to Dutch, available at his website, whatever it may be. You can also find him on Facebook, and you can access the book through there and also purchase his uh, follow-up to The World According to Dutch, which I have not, but I'm pretty sure I will at some point. I do. I have it. it Tales from it the Dirt Road. Is it really good? Yes, it is. Okay. Anyway, back to the thing. Um, you know, it just it, it, it doesn't mean the same to me, man. It's just... I have no desire. It's, I don't want to say it's as bad as watching uh, the crap going on in WWE right now with the with whatever they're trying to do, but it just it's not the same. It's like it's like when Second Darlene came in on Roseanne. It's not the same. Yeah, I know. Wicked Nemesis. Okay, so the whole thing about Dutch Mantel. First of all, yes, he knew how to book women. But I ran across a guy named Kerry Awful, who's really not awful, that works at a top rope. He told me, guys... Wait, wait, Dutch hold on, Lincoln. Before you get started, before you get started, his, it's actually Terry Awful? Yes. Best, Best name ever! And, uh... <laughs> no. And his... And he hit one of the worst drop kicks I've ever seen thrown. And Would Tasha you say it was awful? The, it was awful, yeah. And we were like, ugh. We are like, who taught you to throw a drop kick like that? He said, Dutch Mantel... And it's one of Dutch Mantel's trainees out of Nashville. Dutch told this kid to put his hand out straight. Put his arm out straight. Now, man, just put your arm out straight in front of you, the tip of your finger with your hand open, and just to jump and try to kick that. And that's how you do a drop kick. I think I, I threw up, I peed, I crapped, and I cried all at one time. I was like, that is horrible, horrible advice. But well, the women's division is dead. The women's well, division is dead, you know. I hate to cut you off, but let's be honest now. At this point in his life, Dutch has kind of kind of lost it a little bit. So, <laughs> the one thing Dutch has not lost is the psychology and the ability to teach. Because I think um, after me, I'm working with him on a couple of different occasions, Dutch still has a very solid head for this business. And granted, we get to a point where the head and the heart's there, but the body may not be. I'm definitely at that point right now. But by the same token, um, that's why you know. He was, I, I'm going to use the role of Hollywood in this particular circumstance, and I don't mean Hollywood Hogan. Um, Dutch was a great performer in ring, tremendous, all of the above. He was a great heel. And I think that as a front office personality, he had a lot to offer this business. And I don't, I still don't understand the politics of why Dutch was let go from the knockouts division. Which and I know we're breaking a wall when we do that when we're talking about that. But I'll say that I'll say it like this: after he turned over the reins to somebody else, after he was um, after he was out, um, the knockouts division has never recovered. Uh, well, that, that's that, uh, that's true. That I said something about him teaching teaching this kid wrong, and you're like, well, he's a great teacher. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> okay, I but you're right; it has been down, and it will <clears throat> never recover uh, because they put if you put broke if you portray the daughter of one of the greatest sports entertainers of all time who's never bumped, who's never trained before in this business over a division, automatically you all, you lose all credibility. And what was the name you used for her, Mabo? Oh, Brock Hogan. 
Brock. Yes. Old, old Brock Hogan. Two more the, matches. Uh, the okay. oldest son of the Hogan. We're going to go. We're going to work straight through the bottom of the hour break. We're going to take it about 15. Um, from this vantage point, Kid Cash and Gunner, Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez, which should easily steal the show. Agree or disagree, Mark? Um, I'm going to... Uh, see, I don't know about saying it's going to be a show stealer. I think that's going to be like a ladder match or something. Um, I will say this, though. Chavo, yes. It's gonna, it's, Chavo's performance is going to be phenomenal. Uh, Gunner, I, I don't understand why. I, I don't know what happened. I don't know who's, you know, for Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Cinnamon Toast Crunch he pooped in at TNA or what, but they stopped whatever push he had going. Of course, you know, they had him lose to Bischoff's kid, but... Um, that was stupid. I, I mean... And now where's Garrett, where's Garrett Bischoff at? Um, hanging around Devon. Anyway, um, figured he's off with the Rock. <laughs> uh, but but uh, you know, Gunner, Phil Shatter. I, I, I it's just I think it's a he, he's being wasted. It, I mean, and I, you know, as opposed to getting wasted like other people do. It's just he is one of those talents that are just it's literally being wasted, and it frustrates me because I'll even for, and, and, and and shame on me. I forget he even exists until I see him post something on Twitter. And I'm like, oh, crap, it's Gunner. And and, um, and like I said, I, he's, he can have such a bright future if they would use him properly. Yep. But they're not for some reason. Um, so I think I think if you get Chavo and, and Gunner into the ring, it's going to be crazy. Um, we saw a little bit of Kid Cash. Oh, did they wrestle on Impact? I don't remember. Anyway, uh, Kid Cash or Cash or whatever he's going by these days. Um, I call him Fugly McGee because man did not age very well. Yeah. Uh, him and Chavo are going to turn in a, 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 a wonderful match. The unknown factor is going to be Hernandez. I mean, you know, one minute they're they're all all about some Hernandez. One minute they're like, uh, "Well, send him to Mexico to refine himself," and then they're like, "Oh, he's back. What do we do with him? I don't know. Stick him with another Mexican. Why? Because they all like each other." I don't know, but I don't know if 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 it was somebody other than than Hernandez. I would say, that, and I can't say who right now because honestly, I honestly don't know. Um, if it was somebody other than you know Hernandez, I would say this would definitely be the the, the sleeper match. Um, but I just if it would be if it was Homicide instead of Hernandez, yeah, I think it would be insane. But I don't know, I'm just. I've got issues with Hernandez and expecting a lot out of him. So. Yeah. But that's not taken away from, you know, anybody, really. Wicked. Well, of course, you all know how I feel about Shatter Shatter. Uh, great talent. Shatter needs a manager. Uh, this is not going to be a pleasant match. And I, and I like Kid Cash. Uh, Tasha Simone says Kid Cash is one of the baddest guys in the business. I'll take her word for it. But you gotta, you gotta feel this is Shatter's time to get back on track. So I'm, oh, I'm sorry, Gunner. I'm going with Gunner. You call him Shatter, Dirk. <laughs> and I notice I left out the X Division title match: uh, Kenny King versus uh, Fruity Drink. Um, I just Zima Ion. I just can't get over that name. That is so freaking idiotic that they, 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 they want to take. The kid had a great name in Shima Zion, and granted, they wanted to go ahead and make it a little bit more of his own without trying to compromise what little notoriety the kid had up in the Northeast. But that is just ultimate stupidity the way that they've the, the way he've done it, the way they've done his name. And well, it's the same. It's the same thing they did with, did with Jigsaw from Chikara. They I know. Called him Rubix. That I mean, at least made a little bit more sense. Rubix, though. Yeah, it's funny as hell that somebody rem would remember that part. Instead of calling him Zima, oh come on, Zima is the Zima is the joke of the alcohol industry. Come on, they could have called him Ice House. I'd like that better. Or McGinnis. Oh no, that name sucks too much for anybody to have. <laughs> there you go, or McGinley either. Um, from that vantage point, Mabo, your thoughts X Division title match, real quick. Um, well, if Kenny King walks out with his life. He's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. 
If he let's put it this way, if he walks out, he's still the winner. Why? Because Shima Jima, Simi Shama, Shama Lama Ding Dong, freaking. I, I I posted it on Twitter uh, during um, Destination X. I guess if you can cripple one guy, if you can bust open other people's faces, if you can call someone who should be the X Division champion, if you can cause them to tear their ACL, their other ACL. Hell, kid, we're going to put the belt on you. Why? Because you look pretty and you have nice hair. But you know what? He's a joke. He is a fucking joke, and he shouldn't have the belt. So, Kenny King, if you're listening, if you got friends who are listening, if your friends, grandmas, uncles, cousins, dog just happened to step on the freaking controls and flipped over to us, you know what? Kid, you don't deserve the belt. I will tell that to your face. This is not some kind of little gimmick or rant or whatever. You don't believe me? You come to Birmingham. You call in. 205 316 9900 calling to be on ringside. Ask for Mabo. We come on, we're on this, we're on at 5 30. I will tell you to your face, you don't deserve the belt. You've been in the business for a couple of years. Yes, I know who you are. I know what you've accomplished. You don't deserve that belt. You're a danger. You freaking, you don't know how to be safe. So you know what? You don't deserve that belt. I'll, where's, where's, that, where's, the, where's the damn pay per view at, Eddie? Where's, where's Hardcore Justice at? Uh, Arizona? Uh, something like that? Hang on, no, let me go. Let's go to, what, what's that little startup website that people have where you can get a startup, you know, to donate money? Go to, uh, oh, I don't know. You know anyway, y'all know what that site is. You guys raise me, you guys raise money for me to go to Hardcore Justice, listeners. I will go to Hardcore Justice. I will get there at 5 freaking o'clock in the morning and stand out there until freaking Zima Shima Zappy Zuzu comes out, and I will say, come here. Let me talk to you, little man. All right? It's in Orlando I, with the Impact Zone. Really? I thought one of them was in Arizona. Okay, That's anyway, for glory. you know what? I'll, go, I'll ride the Incredible Hulk ride. I'll get me a churro. I'll go freaking pick out a wand from, from Harry Potter World. I'll come back there. I'll stuff it up his nose, cut that queer hairdo of his, and say, kid, you don't deserve the belt. Because he doesn't. He makes me sick. So apparently, he's blowing somebody in the back to get that belt. Should we count that for your last call, Mabo? Yes. Okay, Mabo, last call. <laughs> Zima Owens blowing somebody in TNA Impact to get the freaking X Division belt. Hell, don't be surprised. You know what? You know what? Don't be surprised if it, if it comes out that Brooke Hogan and Zima Ion are dating. Called it. Right there. Suck it. So, which one did you just say? I said Brookie Brock. No, the Uck It. Which one did you use? I need to go back and find it. Suck It. Oh, Suck It? Okay. As long as the S and not the F, I don't have to, have to worry about post-production. Because we're good to this point. No, I didn't say the F word. Okay. I'm I thought not other people. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the ranch, that's the other one for the uh, for the blooper reel. Um, short version. If Brooke Hogan or Brock Hogan and Zima Ion are dating, who's the bull and who's the bitch? I mean, I just have to ask that point blank. Who's the man in the I, relationship? Well, if you've got a question, then obviously you haven't been paying attention to the show this past four what, four years, three years, four years. No, I just anyway. don't pay attention to Zima Ion and Brock. I mean, Brooke. Look, I'm telling you, if you can look at you can look at old Simi Jimmy, and you can look at old Brock, and you can tell who's got the penis and who's got the vagine. Yes, Brock Lahu, gun, <laughs> wicked last call. Ladies and gentlemen, Hell City, August 18th, Hell City Civic Center, Global Championship Wrestling. Mad Dog Dan Sawyer has done something that not many NWA promoters have done. He is paying, and this is a shoot, for a great match. These are not women that you pay $10, $15, or you have some guy eat them out backstage. This is one of the matches, guys, for the ages. This is going to be a match that you always look upon. This is going to be a match where the NWA Women's World Champion, Tasha Simone, is coming to Alabama. The NWA Women's World Champion is coming to wrestle. The island girl, woman, lady, whatever, Tracy Taylor, 
she's been developmental. She's done her thing all over the United States. And then you have Calm Like a Bomb Pandora, the queen of the MOD, the cult icon in all of the independent circuit, the legitimate woman that when she goes to an event, all the women, all the workers, all the talent ask for her autograph yeah. and mark out and take pictures for her. Why? Because she's one of the best. And then you have Nina Monet, who's been in this business a limited time, but has wrestled men, has been in steel cage matches, has done everything she can to better herself. And she chose one heck of an opponent, one heck of a, of a partner for this tag team match in the NWA Women's World Champion, Tasha Simone. If you're anywhere in the Southeast, August 18th is the place you want to be, Pell City Civic Center. Pell City, Alabama. This is going to be a match that for the next 10 years, people in the Southeast will talk about. This is a match that you could put on a pay-per-view and sell tickets. This is a pay-per-view quality match. This is a match that some people will remember and tell their kids about. This is a match that come August 18th, everyone who doesn't know who the reigning NWA Women's World Champion is, Tasha Simone, they will know. And then come September 8th, she's losing that title to Call Like a Bomb Pandora in Lebanon, Tennessee. August 18th, GCW. Kudos to Mad Dog Dan Sawyer stepping up and making this happen. And I'll add a little addendum to that. Um, the, the, the listeners know my tenuous past with the company that Eddie works at. Um, and very few times a year do I go. Mostly it's to see, you know, Wicked Nemesis because he's just so cuddly and cute. Um, <laughs> but the opportunity to see a, a, someone who pretty much is family on this show and has been on probably more times than, any, than you know, some, some people we've had as, ho- as co-hosts in the past, yes. <laughs> um, Tasha Simone, the, the opportunity for her to not just... Her by herself is one thing, but the fact that she's the representative for the NWA women's division is just is is is, is twofold. So not not many not many reasons or things can get me to go to GCW, uh, but to the chance to finally meet Tasha because you know Eddie's worked with her, Wicked's worked with her. I don't know how many times. Um, so to finally meet Tasha face to face and not get punched in the face, I, I'm going to be there. Whether Tom's will tag along or not, you know, it depends. You know, it's what happens when you get a girlfriend. Uh, women, who needs them? I do. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to go out there, and if I'm willing to put my differences aside with and go see Tasha <laughs> Simone, then you guys listening can get off your butts. Go put, what is it, Eddie, $10? Yeah. Scrape up ten dollars, you know. Maybe not buy that six pack that you need. To, you know, how about this? How about you get a six pack instead of drink a six pack? You fat tubs of goo. Go out, <laughs> see Tasha Simone, see Pandora, see Bleaky Blondie Big Bleach Street there. T- Tracy was it? Tracy Lord. Tracy, Tracy Taylor. Taylor. Uh, they've all been in porn. It doesn't matter. And uh, oh, old Nina, Nina Monette there. You know, go 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 out there and see them. And you know, there might be something else entertaining. Maybe Ted Guinness will actually have a Rorschach sweat stain, and we can hold a contest to see who can come up with the most creative thought on what his sweat stains look like. Maybo. Well, there you go. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Eddie, your last call. <laughs> My dinner's ready. Maybo, shameless plugs. <laughs> uh, M-A underscore B-O on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Mark Bowman. Um, Eyewitness Store and Bob's Comics and Bob is so mad at me every time I plug him on the show. He gets so mad, but I because he's a cranky old codger who doesn't want any help running his business. But I still love him anyway. He smells of cheap booze and coffee. I'm gonna have um, to drop out there and see him sometime. Let's see, create yeah, do it, do it. Say man, we love advertising you on our show, just see what he does. Uh creative concepts, um, and other things and stuff. I don't know. I've kind of got a headache because I've been playing DC Universe all day, and I might have developed some kind of epilepsy. So, 
Uh, Wicked, over to you, shameless plug. Thank you. <laughs> well, first of all, I'll, I will have you all know that that you stream. When that Ustream video goes up to YouTube, my last call, or my, sorry, my, yeah, my last call and the subsequent after that will be put up in a segment its own, because that was pretty funny. Yeah, it was. But, Eddie, Eddie and Mabo, you guys know, we don't say it often enough, thank you guys, thank you all. Thank you for having me on, I love doing this show, you know, you can catch me at Wicked Nemesis on Twitter, VO, Bailey Motion. We don't mention VO. <laughs> fun, Funnierdot.com. You can edit that out. Funnyordie.com, and especially Facebook fan page, Blogger, Blogspot, etc. And I have a Ustream as well. Hey, Ustream, Wicked Nemesis. But go out and support local independent wrestling. Go out and support because that is the backbone of this very industry indeed. You can catch me Wednesday night, the To Be Determined show with the NWA Women's World Champion Tasha Simone, Joey Image, and Mad Dog Matt Denton. And of course... Tonight, GCW Pro Wrestling Radio. You never know when I'll call in. There you go. Maybe, maybe we can bury Ted again because that was great. <laughs> I know he legitimately got bad. That's what made it really funny. No, he didn't. But thanks. <laughs> but, hey, NWA Top Rope, Tasha. The ball's in your court. August eighteenth. You can find me personally at Fast Eddie Lane over on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Fast Eddie Lane. Uh, the dot com is actually being reworked right now, so we're going to have that back up and running, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. From that vantage point, follow at Beyond Ringside over on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside Live, and of course, BeyondRingside.com. The best of Beyond Ringside 24-7 does air through BeyondRingside.com. You can also find us on the Shoutcast Radio Network. You can um, activate the players through... Um, Real Player, iTunes, um, what's the damn program I'm using right now? The Lala thing. Oh, yeah, Winamp. And uh, Windows Media Player. Uh, so there's a lot of ways that you can listen live as well as the best of. Uh, what, as Wicked made the reference to a minute ago, uh, yours truly, Ted Guinness, O'Hagan, and J.J. Tanner. Uh, spearheading the, um, the console as far as GCW Radio a little bit later on this evening, 9 o'clock p.m. Central, 10 o'clock Eastern. Folks, I want to thank you for joining us on the live version. Daryl um, RZE Pez to everybody who came through the chat room. Great to see y'all to everybody who's been sending me the instant messages and the direct messages on Twitter. Thank you very much. Uh, let me lean over here and hit this little button right here, and we'll play the music and get ready to take it home. Beyond Ringside, of course, Sundays, 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central, 3.30 Pacific, live in all time zones. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm, I'm going to draw it for saying this, but I'm going to go ahead and say this one. First off, to the women's 4x100 relay team, kick-ass job. Um, great for bringing home. The, I saw the replay of that um, when they destroyed the competition in the gold medal round. To the men's 4x100 um, medley, just dominant performance. And I have to say this, the world will never see another Olympian like Michael Phelps. Um, he said Michael Jordan is his role model. You could have a lot worse people to pick for your role model and your icon and your hero in any kind of business. To me, I just actually saw a few minutes of Space Jam yesterday, and I, I'd forgotten all about that movie. And thank you again to the folks who made Space Jam for having the Birmingham Barons team jerseys and logos all over the first part of the um, and the majority of the movie. Um, I'll be back with the Barons tomorrow night at Regents Park in Birmingham, and Tuesday night at Regents Park is, of course, great double-A baseball action. So, forgot to get that in during Shameless Plugs, and thank you, Papa Sias, thank you, Buffalo Wild Wings in Hoover, and thank you, Buffalo Wild Wings in Alabaster. Now, hitting the music all over again. It should be playing, but it's going to be a pain in the ass. All right. We're going to call it a day here at the Radio Ranch. Thank you for hanging out with us, and for everybody listening on the replays and downloading the podcast, thank you guys so much. Mabo, Wicked, thank you for all that y'all do for the show. It's always appreciated. I've got a great team around here. Um, also, Beyond Ringside alumni, probably getting ready to make some uh, reappearances here on the show in the very near future. Let's take it home for Mark Mabo Bowman. She was right, I can fuck it. For the Oracle of Ominous, the architect of intellect, pro wrestling manager extraordinaire, Wicked Nemesis. August 18th. This is the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Eddie Lane saying Adios, das Badania, hasta luego, off weeders, and ciao, sayonara, adieu, adivereche, farewell, abasino, au revoir, and until we meet again, aloha means bye bye. We'll see you next Sunday, 5 30 Central, as we all go beyond ringside. Bye for now. Mabo, tell us how you really feel about Zima Ion. 
man. I'll tell you right now, I don't know what this weird crusty stain is in front of my PC, but it's probably got something to do with protein. Yeah, if you will, let me know if I don't see the tweet uh, when, the, when the Ustream uh, is up. Okay. So I'm going to break it down. I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through all of them. Like I said, I'm going to make like little montages. And I may have one that's nothing but all the uh, shameless plugs we've thrown out. Or maybe one that's all the you know, last calls. Yeah, just, well,